Hey, what's up, ecosystem? Transport Industry Insight. We're talking about OEMs, auctions, dealers, carriers, brokers, shippers, services, regulations, equipment, and loads. Tonight's live guest is Jake McLeod of RPM, and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about the industry as a whole. Plus, before that, I'm going to talk about auto transport industry ebook topics i've got a wheel of those 10 topics that i just talked about so bring your questions and buckle in because it's tuesday nights live on auto transport intel i'm jay your host welcome back to the show What's going on? Welcome back to Tuesday Nights Live on Auto Transport Intel. I'm Jay, your host. Thanks so much for joining me once again. And let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. I think the audio's okay. Looks like the video's coming in all right. So I don't want it to be too loud. I want it to be just right. And I'm excited. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about Transport Industry Insight. But before we do that, I want to give you the lineup. If this is your first time here, I want you to feel welcome. Thanks for joining Auto Transport Intel on Tuesday Nights Live. This is the flagship show where we have interviews and experts and advertisers. Please do say hello in the live chat. Please jump in there. Say hello. Promote your company, uh, your product, your service. Say where you are. What do you need? What are you looking for? How can we help? Then we're going to do industry news at the quarter hour. I love this at the quarter hour. I love this segment. Industry news, I spent a lot of time working on it. And um, it's social media news, national news, and different news of the different verticals. Brokers, carriers, dealers, auctions, tech, changes. We're also going to do another information superhighway after the industry news. And this will be a setup as we move into the feature and interview because I've been thinking, you know, um, if there was an auto transport industry ebook, and I know there's a few ebooks out there, but I think they're mostly driver carrier centric. I don't think they hit upon the other verticals near enough. And so I've, I've been throwing around the ideas of an ebook. I don't think I'm going to publish an ebook. So I'm just going to throw it out here tonight. So I hope you enjoy that. I think I divided it into 10 parts, and we'll see if it works. You'll let me know. And then we're going to move into the Transport Industry Insight with Jake McLeod of RPM. You've heard of RPM. It's a large broker carrier, and um, they work hard at what they do. But beyond that, Jake loves to talk about the transport industry as a whole. It's something I like to do. And so together, we're going to talk about the industry. We're going to, we're going to see uh, you know, what there is to talk about, and we're really looking forward to a lot of lively live chat lively chat so please do join us for that that is the rundown tonight so what we're going to do is we're going to go into the live chat i want you to stick around please say hello and then i'm going to bring the live chat on the screen you're not going to want to miss it are you completely stressed out from all the calls and the contracts and the verification of loads when nobody answers the phone call murphy auto dispatch services today Murphy Auto Dispatch Services has over 15 years of experience in the transport industry. We are your office while you are on the road. 
We book, we verify, and we bill out your loads for you. We have an excellent accounting staff and an even better dispatch team. Give us a call today at 417-273-0021. Or if you want to email me, it's murphyautotransport31 at yahoo.com. Give us a call today. That is the voice of Sue. She is the owner at Murphy Auto Transport Services. If you haven't talked to Sue and you have a dispatching question, a brokering question, she's a fully licensed broker, either tune in on Thursdays at Dispatching Live or send her an email or give her a call and she'd be happy to help you with your request. We're now going to go into the live chat. Guys, uh, by the way, I want to mention this. Um, I don't know if you know... But um, the viewership on this show is now rivaling automotive webinars, um, which is really exciting. I am happy to say, and I thank you for helping me make that happen. The ATI, CTS, Cars on the Move community continues to grow. And we see the hello in the live chat, and we're seeing, we see it on all the shows, actually. Oh my gosh, this is going crazy. Do you see the super chats on the screen, guys? Thank you so much. I you know I got to hit the siren. Um, thank you, Ty. Uh, you know what? You put in a lot of hard work, too, last night on Cars on the Move Monthly Roundtable. That was amazing. We're going to touch upon that tonight. So thank you so much, Ty. Man on the street every Friday on Cars on the Move. And also, Ron at NYC Traffic, Inc. Thank you guys for those super chats. Everything I get goes back into the channel. Literally Tuesdays, I'm sitting here all day working i do some phone calls um because i gotta do still gotta do phone calls and try and get the bills paid but otherwise working on the show like crazy and i hope it shows so thank you so much i'm gonna back up the live chat so that i get everybody in here uh so please do say hello and you see it on the screen it's you know it's great to you know get the word out there if you got something to say you can say it it's right on the screen ty was here first present what's up ty Thanks for the super chat, buddy. Uh, Bill Bad Apples is here. What's up? Uh, what's going on, Bill of Bad Apples? He's a Facebook instigator. Uh, Michael Culler, is this where you learn how to do something or other with cars? Yes, it is, Michael Culler. Thank you so much. Nick Medor, what is auto transport? How did I get here? Excellent. Thank you, Nick, so much. Carlos Braxton, ACB Logistics. How did I get here? That is a Talking Heads lyric. Carlos Braxton, thanks for tuning in, buddy. Um, Kimberly's here, monitoring the live chat, sharing the information. Thank you, Kimberly, so much. Appreciate it. Uh, too much green acid. Nick, turn around and walk away. <laughs> this is hashtag. This is car hauling. Um, Craig Hinshaw's with us. What's going on, Craig? Thanks for saying hello. Joseph McCleary. Someone said, "Don't eat the green acid." Actually, you know what it is. Don't plant the seeds from China. Okay. Don't do it. Please don't do it. Brian Pepson, hello, I'll teach me something new, Jay. I'm going to try, Brian. I think this is going to be a great show. I think you're really going to like it. And I do want, I mean, I want people to chime in. If you've got a question, if you think we should touch upon a subject more, maybe touch upon a subject less. But I know this. I am paying attention. There are, there are transportation is hitting the media in some other places, but it's not near as in-depth as it is here. And I'm excited about that. We're going to keep it that way. Auto Transport Intel is the car shipping business channel. Uh, what else we got? Oh, 5x5. Five five. Thanks, Joseph McCleary. Ron at NYC Traffic. Thank you so much. What's up, Ron? Thanks for tuning in. Um, what else? Gerard says hello. Thanks, Gerard. Thank you, buddy. Clapping. Ryan at Auto Converse. Hello, ATI crew. What's up, Ryan? Thanks for your hard work, for the updates. Uh, we got, we always have some updates and I'll tell you what, if you haven't seen, have you seen the autotransportintel.com website? Thank you, Ryan. Dude, the website's the best it's ever been. It's current. It's relevant. It looks great. I love it. Vance Mattis. What's up, Ty? Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you. Thanks again, Ty, for that super chat. That is so cool. Driving the ship. I try. I, I'm in the ship and driving the ship and... You know, I, that way I could I, I could take your hands off the wheel for a minute, you know, right? Because you, you're driving all day. Let me drive for a minute. Let me take over. 
Jaron Church says hello. What's up, Jaron? Friend of the show. Appreciate it. Uh, looks like a good show again. You never let us down. Thank you so much, Joseph. Charles Method, hello from West Central Ohio. What's up, Charles? What is going on? Renee Hernandez, what's up? Hello from Denver. What's up, Denver? Ty, boots on the ground. That's right. Um, Ryan's in here. Hey, Serge the Car Hauler's in here. Hi from LA. Svatoslav has an auto parts gig going on in Miami and doing well. That's awesome. Thanks for the update. And by the way, listen, I know what, you know what, I've noticed this. Like, I'll have, uh, <laughs> okay, I do shows, right? I'll have shows from the past and like an in-depth interview and lots of information. Um, and then I got to go on to the next show. So I apologize and I've had to do this before, that if I'm remiss about, you know, I do a show and then I got to get ready for the next, I try and delegate tasks so that folks can get what they need because I got to go on to the next show. So thanks for checking in, Serge, and thanks for letting us know about Svatoslav. Uh, back to the live chat. Michael Schlitz says, great show. Thank you, Michael. And we're live, by the way. You saw that. I hit the wrong button. We're actually alive. You're alive. I'm alive. And you know what? That's pretty cool. More and more, we appreciate that. FNS Trucking, hey car people, hope all is well. We're glad you're here, FNS. Thanks so much. Vladimir Butik, hello, it's Vladimir from EVS. What's up, Vladimir? Um, let's see, we got some more hellos. Okay, we are alive. Yes, we are. We are, we are alive. It is 812. Looks like it's a little loud. Is it a little loud? Because the last thing I want to do is distort, you know? Distortion is for like, you know punk bands and stuff not car shipping business channels so i want to be right in there let's see let's just mess with that one more time i'm good thanks ty i appreciate it and it depends on what you're listening on and how loud you have it you know you've got your youtube volume settings your computer volume settings your earbuds your speakers etc got to think of all these things by the way two-thirds of the audience is on mobile device are you on a mobile device put it in the live chat what kind of device are you watching on how are you doing? Are you making money right now? I hope you're making money right now. Um, as we know on the load boards, load boards are higher in volume right now than normal. Also, we know that many brokers, shippers, dealers are feeling like it's hard to get a vehicle moved because there's either less carriers or more, more vehicles that need to get moved. They're going to be pushing through this bottleneck and it will eventually get pushed through. So you want to make your money now do that. And if you're not making your money now, we're going to share information about how you can grow your business with Cars on the Move monthly roundtable. Before we get into industry news, here's a certus. We'll be right back. Have you been to AssertusDelivers.com? Did you know that Assertus does more than vehicle transport, storage, title and registration, care, compliance, maintenance? They service fleets. So if you're a carrier and you're hauling a load for Assertus, that might just be one part of the full transaction and service they're providing for the dealer or fleet or shipper or corporate customer. So visit AssertusDelivers.com. In fact, I'm excited. We're going to do a, um, September 1st, we're going to do a Assertus driver um, recruitment live video. It's going to be great. That's going to be awesome. We're going to learn a lot. So check that out. And what are we doing now? Oh, we're doing industry news. Cool. It's that time. It's 8.15. Man, we're right on time. Thank you guys so much. By the way, um, Mark, now I, I know Mark missed the round table and he let us know. He, you know, he's a firefighter, and he was at the fire station. I guess it was kind of crazy busy, so uh, maybe he's busy with the fire station again tonight. But he'll check in if he can. So, appreciate that. Love it, the way we look out for each other. I like that a lot. Okay, let's see what we got here. What is... Oh, we start with the video thumbnail. 
as we call it, the video thumbnail. This is Transport Industry Insight with Jake McLeod. Now, Jake, I hope you're uh, I hope you're watching um, because we are going to be touching upon some of those some of those subjects. You know, pre show pre show's got to be like before you hit the road. You know, okay, you got to make sure. Okay, do I have do I have my snacks ready and my drinks ready and my bedroll and my laundry and all that stuff? Am I ready? Ready. Okay, so, all right, Jake. Um, and Jake is with RPM. You been to the RPM website lately? RPM, just one call to move anything anywhere. Please change the channel to Auto Transport Intel. I'm no longer on Facebook. I don't, I don't broadcast live to Facebook, just YouTube. Great, and my computer's calling me? Oh, that's just perfect. Oh, yeah, that's excellent. Getting phone calls while we're live. Hey, you know what? You need to, you need to change the channel. Okay, to YouTube. Thanks for putting up with that. I have a lot to learn, but I only trust people like me. So that's my cat lady meme of the night. Because you know what? Here's what I don't understand. You know what I don't understand? Uh, there are places to get amazing information, such as Auto Transport Intel. Great, my phone's ringing too? Nope. But I love you and I appreciate you, but I'm live. <laughs> I'm doing a show right now. But here's the thing is that uh, sometimes you got to get out of your comfort zone to learn new information. Because if you keep talking to the people that know what you know, guess what? You don't learn a lot. Something to think about. Okay, top 12 car hauling load boards. That's right. That sums it up for uh, if you're doing the load board dance and you're asking for another 10 bucks to get another 20 pack of chicken nuggets. Let me tell you, I think it's time to join us at the Cars of the Move Roundtable. Now, this is about the size of the roundtable last night. Um, we had about a dozen people. It was an amazing group, bigger than last week. Um, lots of carrier information. We, we they were actually we talked to you guys that were there. We talked a lot about uh, being a carrier and talking to dealers. It's amazing how scary and crazy that process is. It's kind of like going live with a YouTube channel. Nonetheless, um, really great. It was a 90 minutes of packed information. If you want to find out how to get to the next one, you can go to go to autotransportintel.com. And do I have my slides out of order? Because here, let me say this. The next session is Monday, September 14th at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Click the Sign Up Now button. Um... Here, let's do this. Let's share the link because I don't, you know what? I don't think I have, I don't think my I have my slides in the right order. And you know what? Since it's a live show and it's my show, I'm just going to go grab the link right now. How about those apples? And here's the link. And bada bing, bada boom. There's the link. Okay, let's keep moving. Shall we? We shall because dealers can't afford to do this. You know, I'm in an automotive webinar today. And I'm going to get to the point. I'm going to get to the point. Uh, dealers need to do home delivery more and more. But they can't afford to do it themselves. So who's going to do it? Who's going to do this? Now, if you're in car shipping, you might be thinking, well, I'm just going to let some tow company do it. Let me tell you, more and more, there is talk about this. We're going to keep talking about it. Because uh, I don't know if a dealer can afford to dress up a couple salespeople in uh, hospital gowns and try to do a BOL. But you know what? You know who does do that stuff? Not necessarily the hospital gown part, but Assertus. See, Assertus, again, they're a large company that one part of it could be the over-the-road transport. But another part of it is the final mile. This is a business model. We're going to keep talking about it because it's not going away and it's only growing. So there you have it. There's their six, that's the Assertus six parts. You get the vehicle transport, goes to the final mile. You want to be part of the final mile? Tune in September 1st. By the way, why do you love auto hauling? Eric says, I like driving vehicles before the customer ever does. The kids faces as they pass our truck on the highway. The salesperson's reactions as we pull up to the dealership with the unit they've been waiting on. I like that. That's a pretty good reason. And Hanson Atkins says, when we asked Eric what he loved most about being an auto hauler, that's what he says. Hanson and Atkins is on LinkedIn posting posts for a reason. We talked about this last night, too. Are you on LinkedIn? Here's my wheel tonight. You guys know that I like to do wheel-o-topics. Tonight is not a wheel-o-topics, 
but this is the 10 topics that I summed up as the 10 parts of the auto transport industry ebook carriers, brokers, services, equipment, regulations, shippers, loads, OEMs, auctions, and dealers. 10 parts. What am I missing? Put it in the live chat. I would love to hear that. That'd be awesome. Let's see here. Next. Hey, this is how you get your car shipping news on Auto Transport Intel. So thanks for tuning in. Four times a week, Tuesday Nights Live kicks off the week. And actually this week it's five times because we had cars on the move, although that's not live. Mobility Tech Connectivity Show, Wednesday afternoons, Dispatching Live on Thursdays. One of my personal favorites. Dispatching Live's awesome. That's amazing information. And load boards, you know, you may not you may not love load boards, but sometimes you got to deal with them. Speaking of, did you guys catch the motherload.app show? That was last Tuesday. That was a great show. Man, that was that was really engaging. A lot of people tuned in. I loved it. Um, in fact, motherload put uh, they did a blog post. So I'm on if you go to motherload.app you can see the Auto Transport Intel post on their site. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. Do you have a blog? You want to feature Auto Transport Intel? That's so nice. Email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. This is the show tomorrow, Wednesday, 2 p.m. on Auto Conversion. Feel free to tune in and join us. We're going to talk to Steve Greenfield of Automotive Ventures. He's really busy on LinkedIn. I keep saying LinkedIn, don't I? Might be something to it. Dispatching live Thursdays at noon with Sue and Jay, where we talk about stuff like, oh, this is a video edit from that show from last Thursday. Did you see this? Best central dispatch, load board, search filter, settings advice. Because when, you know, you got you got access to central dispatch, now what? Do you know how to search, how to fill out your search filters to find the best paying loads for what you're looking for? Minimum cents per mile, minimum pay per load. Do you do cities? Do you do states? What kind of search cones do you use? Do you use reverse reverse search cones? I love dispatching live. Oh, here's a good one. I don't know where this came from. Uh, please text me. Which load were you trying to pick up? I contacted you in May. Which load? It was a load out of Lexington back back in May. I'm not there any longer. Well, so much for text message. When is May? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> uh, that just happened. That's awesome. By the way, ever have you dealt with companies that uh, they get irritated when they're signing up drivers that don't haul often enough, and so they don't want to sign up the drivers on the load board? You guys know any companies like that? What load board companies are you getting irritated with? I want to know. Actually, I want to know. Because I know... There's a few. There are a few. By the way, Murphy Auto Transport Services, she's got one spot left. So if you're a carrier, you need a good crackpot dispatcher, give her a call. Say, I'm looking for that crackpot dispatcher that Jay was talking about. Uh, she'll love that. Cars on the Move is on Fridays at noon. That's me and Ty. We cut it up and have a good time. This was a great video edit. Um, Auto Transport or Car Dealer Rate Negotiation Live. I know. He said 25 bucks. Not interested, I get it. But the point is, it's an example of what you can do. We we continue to talk about, Ty loves to talk about, don't be afraid to talk to car dealers. Talk to car dealers. And it's, get, you know what? That's where I think the next thing we got to get into, we need to consult car dealers. Don't be afraid to talk to car haulers. Now, I think the dealer would say, well, I'm not afraid. Okay, well, then get interested in it. Because I'll tell you what, there's something there. There is something there. Especially if he starts talking home delivery. I'm just saying. Oh, here's the link. So you go to autotransportintel.com, click on CTS Coaching, and that's how you get to the roundtable. There we go. Okay, Jay. Hey, do you know about Quotify? Car Shipping Calculator. Go to transportautoquoter.com because are you, do you feel confident in the quotes you give to prospective shippers, right? Especially if it's not your running lane. And then do you have a broker's license to broker that thing out? It's something to, to check into, transport auto quota, especially if you're not a carrier, but you've got prospective clients. Because you know what? Being a broker is all about being in sales. 
That's why you want to click on ATI Insider. Sign up now. Get information. Get the first look. Oh, do you know about the podcast? Jeez, Jay, this is a lot of ATI slides. I'll fix it for next time. But click on podcast. ATI has a podcast now. Click on the podcast button. And you can click on the play buttons on the podcast site. Do we have any actual news here, Jay? <laughs> By the way, do you need an automotive webinar recap? I watch the webinars, and I'm going to say this. Here's my here's my webinar recap. Uh, yep, we do have COVID. Uh, nope, I don't think we're all in this together. And generic corporate slogans are not interesting. Here's another tip. If you're going to wait a few minutes to, to start your presentation, don't just sit there and say, yeah, we're going to wait a few minutes. <whistles> Tell a joke. Talk to the other guy. I don't know. Have some like, you didn't see me sitting around waiting five minutes for the live chat to start up? Come on, people. So that's my automotive webinar recap. I'm telling you. Uh. <laughs> um, by the way, if you go to ATI, if you go to autotransportintel.com, Ryan can help you. Type a message. Call Ryan. Don't don't call me. I'm, I'm live. And they left a message. Well, I'm live. So whoever that was, thanks for the message. I'm just kidding around. I love the phone calls. Oh, it's that time again. You mean we're actually going to do some news after the break? I think we are. So stick around, and I'll tell you what, we're going to be right back. Um, hey, did you know about the Truckify links on Central Dispatch? Central Dispatch is like doing what? Uh, no, they probably already know. So if you go in the reference ID, now there are hyperlinks. Copy and paste that into your browser. Book it. Negotiate. Get it while it's hot with Truckify. Access is everything. Hi everybody, this is Bill Zadites inviting you to become a member of CMG Premium. CMG Premium provides you with an upgraded level of knowledge, research, data, analysis, and much more. With VIP content curated from all of our industry verticals, you'll have more access with CMG Premium. Start your 45-day free trial by visiting autoremarketing.com and click on the green tab labeled Members. That's the green tab labeled Members at autoremarketing.com. Have access to more with CMG Premium. Truckify and CMG Premium, it's no joke. You got to check it out, man. I think actually, I think I almost slurred. Did I just slur? That's crazy. This stinking ELD punch. Well, you know what? Because the ELD is so much fun, so why not just celebrate ELD with some punch? But no, seriously, uh, Truckify, you see the links in the uh, live chat. Visit autoremarketing.com. Amazing information at autoremarketing, such as. This is a great article. Odessa hosts 22 site digital sale for Hertz via simulcast. Now, do you know what a big deal that is? More and more physical auction sales are moving digital. Is that going to affect your car shipping business? Yeah, it is. Now, you may not see it right away. But if you start to wonder why there's been changes, this could be a factor. Odessa utilizes its simulcast digital auction, uh, selling cars digitally to buyers in 19 states. And they're all talking digital auctions now. Let's see, through this technology, vehicles can be sold digitally. And you know, they're talking about, they sell more vehicles. They get a lot more bidders. It's great for the digital auction. Uh, here's another headline. Now, I, you know, I didn't put a lot, uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on this. It's just, it's another headline about Cox Automotive cutting. I think that it's a continuance of the previous headline from probably a couple months ago. I don't follow who's getting fired, but it is important to note What's happening? It's happening all around. I'll bet you know somebody that's been laid off. Majority of those cut work for the company's Mannheim Wholesale Auction Unit. And that could affect your business, especially if you're hauling a lot of wholesale. So what's going on, right? Johns Hopkins Coronavirus Resource Center. Okay, so we've, see, we've seen this before. So I guess it's time to celebrate. Everybody go to the beach. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's not time. It's not time to run out to the beach and you know, roll around in the buffet. I don't think it's time. But, you know, who, who am I to say? Uh, but we do know that uh, supply and inventory have dropped. 
I mean, OEM supply chains are a mess. New car inventory is a mess. Um, used inventory is dropping because that's the bulk of the inventory, which means that prices are sky high. Really? So, yeah, that's going to affect your car shipping business. Uh, here was the headline. Hertz must offload almost 200,000 cars by the end of 2020 as part of its bankruptcy deal. What's interesting is I caught a um, little bit of Jonathan Smoke. He's the chief economist at Cox, and he was talking about, yeah, but not all those cars are just going to hit the auction. So don't be thinking that's 200,000 cars just being dumped at the auction. Interesting. Interesting insight. Freight volumes could go higher in August. And this is where I want to show this because uh, Jake at RPM, who's going to join me live here in about 15, 20 minutes, Jake. Um, Jake knows a lot about freight. And so we are also going to talk about the freight market. So if you're looking to get some freight market information, Man, this is going to be a great show. There's all kinds of information. By the way, if you've been affected by the tropical storm, please stay safe and uh, and watch You know, watch where it's headed. It's headed northeast. Looks like it's already moved on from South Carolina. Caused some damage there. Echo Park used car stores show 52% income spike. It's all about used cars right now. By the way, see it again? Auto remarketing, I'm telling you. Go to autoremarketing.com. Amazing articles. Even if you don't sign up with CMG Premium, there are many articles you can read, but they have that 45-day free trial. I got this at Automotive News. Top 100 retailers ranked by used vehicle sales. Now, anybody want to see that list? I'm telling you, that's an amazing list. Do you want to know the top 100 dealerships in the nation? Yeah, you do. You do. Uh, America's cheapest electric vehicles are coming courtesy of Chinese automaker Candy. So you thought the smart car was small. Yeah, you know what? I think we can get like six candies on the three car. <laughs> and that's in Dallas, which I thought was amazing. Um, VNR electric zero emissions truck. There is a lot of talk about zero emissions trucks, electric trucks. You're going to be seeing more and more of it. I know it may not be a popular topic, but it is not going away. This is interesting, too. Volvo located the electronics and controls in a modular power box under the hood, and then the battery pack slide into shelves on each side of the chassis. The batteries can be charged from... Look at this. I found this amazing. Batteries can be charged from 50% to full in about 30 minutes. Really? On a truck? That's amazing. That is amazing. That's good. That's pretty good news. Uh, first of its kind, LNG-powered vehicle carrier calls Jacksport. Here we go. Here's zero emissions like vessel shipping. The CM Confucius, the world's first vehicle carrier of its size, operated by cleaner, greener, liquefied natural gas. So, you know, zero emissions, you know, it may sound like a punchline, but it is not going away. It's just part of it's part of technology change in the future. That's what's happening. And they reduce carbon dioxide emissions by up to 25% and sulfur oxide emissions by up to 100%. Right, and then we get the Al Gore jokes. <laughs> Captain Al Gore! Okay. It's not even... It's not even close to funny. Oh, it might be close. No salvage car importation into Ghana. I found this interesting. Now, I don't know who this affects, but... One, I saw in the comments, somebody from Ghana was like, yeah, uh, really? No salvage car imports into Ghana. And I thought of candy at Jacksport Storage and Services. Why would that be? Why would you not want any more? Do they have too many? Maybe they do. Uh, $5,000 reward offered for information leading to the arrest conviction of suspects recorded stealing auto transport tractor trailer Everfleet LLC is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the arrest and conviction. They were caught on surveillance video, that's good, from a camera inside the truck, I guess. On the video, a white four-door Jeep Wrangler, which might have been following the tractor trailer, arrives at the crime scene, followed by a white semi-truck. They got it all. They got the suspects drove away in the stolen auto transport tractor with the trailer attached. Here's a photo of one of the guys. <laughs> Okay, but the, the the tractor was abandoned. The trailer they haven't found. 
Uh, and then it just goes on to talk about, uh, you know, high crime, types of crime, billions of dollars lost. Sucks, man. That sucks. Um, yeah, that sucks, too. So, you now have a convertible van, and um, we picked it up that way. It's like that when we got it. I don't know what to tell you. Then, on auto transport everything, let's see, this guy says, Well, we got the M3 delivered safely, but dealing with the driver was a nightmare, to say the least. Didn't even know how to put the car in gear to unload it. I drive not even a minute down my road, and he flipped the hauler with the other car still on it. What the F? <laughs> I went ahead and left, you know. I uh, left information on the screen. You know, it's public information. Hey, what's, uh, I have, have a mechanic check the bottom and ensure it is not damaged underneath, by the way. Those M3s sit low and are prone to dragging going over sharp angles. So there you go. There's some actual ask a car hauler. What else we got here? Okay. We got pretty far without this thing crashing. Let's see here. Is there any more? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, next week, next Tuesday night, award-winning broker Michael Meddy. You are going to want to tune in. Listen, if you are, if you're a carrier, you should tune in. If you're a broker, you should tune in. You're a dealer, a shipper. This is going to be a great show. Carriers drivers they get the spotlight all the time on social media but not brokers not as much now there are some good broker videos but i'm looking forward to talking with michael and joe albacoco who works for michael we did a video test that's gonna be a great show this is the car shipping business channel and i'm glad you're here this is auto transport intel this is tuesday nights live i'm jay your host now here's what we're gonna do we're right on time and we're going to, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to go into, what do we got? Oh, Information Superhighway, yeah. So we're going to go into the Information Superhighway. I'm going to go through, quickly, the 10 topics on the wheel of the Auto Transport Industry ebook. Stick around. Superflow Systems is excited to introduce DispatchCenter.com a full-service load board for brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, featuring integrations with Truckify mobile app and iTruckPay. Use Route Scout technology to build your routes. Maximize truck capacity. Stay loaded at the highest available revenue with the least amount of driving miles. Tell us your lanes. Loadification will alert you to new loads posting in your route. Views instant load notifications sent with BookNow features Search and book loads directly through the Truckify mobile app. Brokers and shippers, post your loads to Dispatch Center. Give authorized carriers the opportunity to instantly book your loads. Dispatch Center powers the Truckify mobile app, allowing instant load assignment to the driver. Truckify will send inspection reports, geolocated pickup and delivery photos, BOLs, and invoices back to the broker. Brokers, shippers, carriers, and drivers, Dispatch Center, and Truckify have what you need to be more profitable every day. We've already mentioned Truckify.com, DispatchCenter.com, TransportAutoQuoter.com, all part of the SuperflowSystems.com car shipping suite of software products and services. So if you need a CRM, a TMS, a mobile app, a load board, you got a question about software, you wanna to talk to Mark at Superflow Systems, and he's in the live chat now. So thanks for joining us, Mark. And I hope your daughter's okay, sorry to hear that. You know, you don't have to show up if you've got some kind of situation going on. And so thank you so much. Thanks for making it, we appreciate it. You are part of the ATI core and family so let's jump into the information super highway. Okay, so now, I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can see it. You can kind of see it. Okay, so we're going to talk about, here, I'm going to, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to post. Uh, I don't want to do one by one, so I'm just going to post it here. Okay, there we go. OEMs, auctions, dealers, carriers, brokers, shippers, services, regulations, equipment, and loads. So I was thinking, I've been thinking this for a while. Right? 
was sitting out on the patio, having a cigar, looking into the clouds and the future, and thinking, how do you sum up the auto transport industry? How, how does one begin to explain what this industry is, right? Uh, especially if you, if you think, well, okay, auto transport, that's cars being shipped, so there must be cars being moved, so you've got truckers. Okay, truckers, carriers, you got that part. You try to tell someone what a broker is, like, what is a broker? What does a broker do? Why are there brokers? Well, is a broker a shipper? No, a shipper is something else. So a shipper talks to a broker, you get the idea. Then, as you start to learn, okay, just that, just those verticals and that part of the ecosystem, then you start to think about, okay, well, where do cars come from? Load boards? No, <laughs> no, it may seem that way. Um, and I put load boards and technology and insurance all under services. So, you know, services, that's a huge category. That's a, that's a big piece of the pie. But is it any bigger than the equipment piece of the pie? I mean, all the trucks and all the trailers, right? Pickup versus semi, flatbed, wedge, four car, five car, stinger, right? Goes on and on. Regulations, what a huge piece of the pie this is. I almost call it a compliance, but you can you can definitely be non-compliant, and the regulations still exist. And we hear there's constant news about it. HOS. You got the FMCSA, you got the DOT, you got the FHWA, and those are just the organizations. And each organization has what, like a, a Bible-sized, you know, stack of regulations down to the dot one and the dot two and the A's and the B's and the C's. Regulations will make it crazy. Shippers, I mean, we're talking corporate relocation, repo, POV. Yes, dealers are in there, but dealers are their own category because they sell cars and do wholesale, which may have nothing to do with that part of the shipment. Uh, auctions, right? You got Mannheim, Odessa, IAA, Copart. Those are your big ones. And then there's lots of independent auctions. And now there's physical auctions, digital auctions. OEMs, we're talking automakers, right? Car makers. How often do you talk about OEMs? Some people never, right? If you work in used car shipping, you can go your whole life without really talking about the OEM. But then again, that's right. There's a year making a model of that car. Oh, who made it? Oh, yeah, the automaker, right? So you follow the life of the car. And by the way, when you talk about the life of a car, you could talk about, well, there was the, the transport of the new car, and then there was the transport to the auction, and the transport to the dealer, and then the transport to the customer, and then the transport once it was repossessed, back to the auction, back to then, and then it, and so it goes until it ends up at the salvage. The yard, and then it doesn't go to Ghana in November. All right, so, and then loads. All right. I talked about all the other parameters except the load itself, right? And under loads, I would put, like, you know, where you live, and what's, what's going on with the weather, and... You know, the dimensions of the vehicle. What kind of vehicles do you haul? Who's your customer? What's your running lane? Those are my 10 parts to my auto transport industry ebook that I haven't even written yet. I guess I've premiered it here on Auto Transport Intel. And don't go write in my ebook. <laughs> I'm just kidding. We're also worried about, you know, sharing information that someone's going to steal it and, you know, we've got to squirrel away our, our nut under the dirt. Why? Why is it like that? I actually don't know. I asked that question originally when I first put this channel together. And I, I even said, I was like, you know, I'm just going to give away my dispatching secrets. It's not like they're these giant secrets anyways. I'm just going to start making videos about dispatching. And uh, it, it, I, I enjoy sharing information on, on a regular basis. Because the more I learn, the more I realize there's more information. And now the information's changed. Which is why I don't even know if it's worth it to write an ebook. By the time you get it written, COVID will be gone. And then it'll be something else. So uh, I, that's why I like the live show format. Because the information's here. Now we are alive. We're together. We're communicating if we want. And, um, and we're sharing information. So that is, you know, thank you so much for sitting through my auto transport industry ebook. 10 topics wheel, which by the way, I think I can spin it here. Check that out. Oh, there it is. There's the noise. Let's spin it again. Let's keep spinning it. 
Just keep spinning the wheel. You can hear that? Awesome. Guys, thank you so much. Here's what we're going to do. Oh, it came, guess, guess what came up? Regulations. So, here's what we got after the break. Thank you guys so much for sticking around. I know it's, it's information. And then and suddenly, the, the, suddenly the show goes sideways like a dog running off in the mall. Right? But we get back on track. We're going to continue shopping. We got things to do. We got a list. We're here together. It's Tuesday Nights Live. And we appreciate it. And so uh, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to I'm going to roll this video. And when we come back, we're going to be live with Jake McLeod at RP of RPM. And we're going to talk about Transport Industry Insight. One of the things that I think many people would notice right away when they walk into the office is the open atmosphere that we have. And in addition, I think they would see a lot of collaboration, a lot of relationship building amongst the group. We work hard and we're all striving for the same goal. It keeps us ahead of all the competition. Our PAMS culture is upbeat, fast-paced, fun, energetic. I wake up every day and actually want to come to work. I think a lot of our customers turn into lifelong friends and family. The same goes for our whole RPM employee base. RPM culture is about being yourself and having fun while you work. There's a lot of cool things you can do here. Like we have a foosball table, pool table. As long as you get your job done, then you can reach for the skies here. We want people's real personalities to come and shine through. People are encouraged to, to be themselves. We really want to encourage people to bring their own special brand to the RPM brand. It's sort of a melting pot of different people and really empower individuals to make decisions to do the right things and the best things for our customers. All right. Awesome video. That is an awesome video. And uh, did you catch the echo on the beginning of that? I had a little bit of... I did that. That was me. Uh, we're getting ready here in the uh, in the live Zoom meeting. Before we do, I know I missed a lot of live chats. Um, and so let's I'm go, <laughs> try and go back here. Let's go back. Let's go into hello live chat for a second. Let's see. What did I miss? J.O. Oh, Jay's a mystic. <laughs> that's, that's pretty nice. I thank you, Repo Joe. Anybody here that might get rid of the 12% tax on heavy equipment for the stimulus package? Ooh, that is an interesting. You know, there is a, so much talk about the stimulus package and how, because man, I'm right. That's why I had to include a slide. I mean, the economy, wow, right? The economy and jobs and people's ability. Look at all the restaurants that are going. I was watch, reading an article, just the list of restaurants in San Francisco going out of business. I mean, oh my gosh, right? Uh, oh, let's see here. I think Jake is here with us. But yeah, thanks so much, guys, for tuning in in the live chat. That is, uh, that's awesome stuff. Mic check one, two, three. What's up? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Can you hear Ooh. me? Oh, yeah. Yo, yo. All right, cool. Hey, let me, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move, just going to do a little last minute title action um, so that people know that you're Jake, I'm Jay, and this is Transport <laughs> Industry Insight with Jake and Jay. That's my brother's name, too, so that's that's the name combo I've heard my whole life. Awesome, man. That's yeah. got to feel good. Not awful, just, right? Yeah, right. Family's good, man. So, Jake of RPM, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm making it official, man. Uh, please say hello to the Tuesday Night's Live audience. Hello, Tuesday Night's Live audience. <laughs> awesome, man. So we're live on YouTube, right? And I mean, more and more, What's here's what I've seen. When I started this channel... Yeah, there were YouTube channels, but now, like in COVID, right? Because you got pre-COVID, in COVID, and we'll have post-COVID at some point. During in COVID, man, there are more and more live webinars and all that stuff, right? It's really common right now. Every everyone's home. Everyone's working from home. So you know, what do you what do you do? You throw a podcast on, listen to that, or, or jump into a uh, you know an industry like you know? I mean, up until you know, recently I met you at a show, whatever that was, a couple of years ago. But there was. What do you no mean, whenever COVID. that was? It was November. 
It was November Used Car Week. I met you nine months ago at was Used that, Car Week. Yeah, I think it was eight twenty eighteen, but maybe it was. It feels. I mean, uh, right? Oh, it does. Yeah, no. I mean, they were, they had wagon wheels and everything back then. No, that was you, November uh, twenty nineteen. Nine months. Ago. Anyone anyone set foot at a conference? Right? Exactly. I mean, that's crazy. Exactly. That exact. That's just a memory. People people tell yarns about that stuff now. You know, having groups of hundreds of people getting together in small conference rooms. You know, I mean, that's exactly <laughs> that's the end of America now, right? Exactly. I was able to I, you and you were at a booth. You were at the RPM booth, yeah, right? And um, I yeah, I just walked on up and we were shaking hands and breathing all over the place. No, no regard for for uh, transmission of uh, of COVID at all. I know it was reckless. It was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you knew uh you knew anthony so yeah i know you had talked right to anthony from, Anth uh, well you know anthony anthony was gracious enough i can actually check it uh it was he was on this show yeah. gosh um that was a long time ago oh it was a long time i'm actually near the beginning of my list yeah. This thing he was talking um, back, right? He was trying to he was talking about our, our, our it was i mean that was 28 that was summer 2018 mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, two years ago. Two years ago, a lot has changed for me in two years. And so, yeah. Thank you, Anthony. Thanks for coming yeah. on the show. And yeah, he was showing us he was showing us the, the Turbo mm -hmm. Mobile app. Yeah, okay. The app, yeah, which now there's uh there's a new driver app out. So um whatever whatever app you saw, old news. Uh <laughs> so delete that and download now the uh the uh, RPM driver. Well, that's, I, the, that's the new hotness. I smell a show. <laughs> yeah, right. Right? <laughs> yeah. Listen, there's one thing that guy likes to do. It's like walk through the demo of that app. So I'm, uh, I'm totally cool with putting them back on in front of everybody. But uh, that's that's the new hotness. And that's what I'm talking about. When we talk about technology, it's like, yeah, that was that was sweet. Not a lot of people were doing apps, and now it's so many iterations. Apps and, are like webinars. Everybody's got one. Everyone's got to have one, you know. It's uh, it sucks to be just somebody else, but hopefully there's value, right? The idea is instead of just being another app, and you're forced, you just force a driver to to download this thing, just you know, because you can, right? And you, right, and the driver that's the that's the driver's immediate reaction. He feels that he's being forced to download something he doesn't want to use. And what's interesting is I was sharing that in the uh, in the industry news that um, somebody that I'm in touch with was in touch with a a new they're a load board provider that's irritated that they're signing up carriers that don't haul often enough and actually i wanted to ask you about that yeah Do, what's that well managing a carrier base and we're gonna yep. by the way I'll, I'll, i'm gonna i don't okay. know if i should postpone this or get into this let's do let's do it this way let's do it <laughs> because technology is the sexy stuff too that's like the fun stuff to talk about Listen, it, but tech, tech is all around us. So even when is. we're, we're you don't think we're talking tech, trust me, I'll, I'll bring it back and and make it uh, punchy tech wise for you. <laughs> Good, and 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 now the the overlap is intense because you'll have a company like I had uh, an inspection AI company on, and they're they're doing inspections, but that's going to run into the overlap of that could easily overlap with okay well where are the loads coming from or where are they going you're just doing the inspection part what about the load what about the carrier right yeah i mean so, you know the, the idea is make, how do you how do you make it really a frictionless experience for the driver right for everyone involved right but you're always kind of consideration for the driver because they're the ones that are you know they're out climbing and i'm in michigan right so you know yeah. these negative 12 degree days and, and we have all these pickups and these guys are wrangling cars around the state you're like ah oh, man these are you know, one more thing to add on top of you imagine wearing, wearing thick gloves, trying to, you know, mess with an app and everything. So you try to always have consideration. Like how do we just make this frictionless uh, to increase adoption of what we're trying to do and then incentivize, like, you know, what's, what's my reward for kind of going through all this. And, and I've always been in favor and a lot of shippers don't get this and, and more on the freight side, you see a lot of this, but there's always punitive damage. It's punishment for being late, like a hundred dollar late fee charge and, you know, $50 fee for this and that. And uh, this is proof. This is like psychologically proof. I actually have a weird, oddly enough, I do have a psych degree as well. And uh, it's proven that, you know, to, if you want to motivate somebody, you incent the behavior that you want to achieve. Punishment is, is punitive, all right? So they're, they're not going to repeat a behavior if you punish them out. But if you want to actually increase the behavior, you have to incent people. 
So instead of saying, hey, you have to use my app, or I'm not going to give you loads, or I'm going to pay you less, say, hey, if you use my app, I'm going to, number one, pay you faster. Um, you know, I'll pay you as soon as you hit, you know, you hit done, right, delivered out. We know it's there. We got the geofence and the, all that good stuff. And, uh, you know, you can get paid instantly. Or we'll just toss drivers extra money. But, yeah, if you use the app, I'll give you 20 bucks. You know, not a bad deal, right? So actually uh, use the app for in the 20 bucks just to use the app. I kind of like that. Especially the first time, you know, I mean, if there's a, if there's a company with a lot of turn of drivers, it gets kind of, you know, a little uh, cumbersome. But, you know, if you're working with a one, two, three, five truck operation and you see the same driver names, the first time you download the app and start using it, hey, man, this is, I'm just going to give you 20 bucks or 25 bucks. Just use the app. They use it and they're like, yeah, you know, it's not so bad. It's like, now it's on their phone. Now it's not foreign. Now it's not a pain in the ass, right? They're like, hey, that next time they have a load, hey, I, I, I just tend to do right in the app, you know, and pulls up and it, it's a lot easier for them. But to just force someone, hey, you have to take my load, you have to take my app. And in the atmosphere, we're in, the market we're in, that's not going to work. I mean, you know, a couple months ago, you could have done that all day. But, you know, why not just try and encourage, you know, more and more drivers to be on your platform anyway? That seems like uh, the yeah. common sense move. I have seen other companies try to incentivize whether it's some kind of points you get some you get some points every time you move a load and those points can go towards a you know like a card with money on it or something like that I mean Cash, that's the why 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 <laughs> That's why I was exactly the best incentive is always money. Yeah, you know, and it's easy for someone just to say, you know, there's an extra 10 bucks or five bucks or 20 bucks or whatever it is. You know, it depends on what we're trying to. But no fives and tens. That's why I talk about chicken nuggets. I'm proud that I introduced chicken nuggets into the payment system in auto transport. Nobody should be paid in chicken nuggets. You can buy 20 chicken nuggets for five bucks, 25, five dollar each, right? And that on the, uh, the dollar menu, that's a lot of chicken nuggets. Actually, they raised the price of chicken nuggets at McDonald's. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm very upset with this news you've but, given. But I agree with you. If you have an extra 50 or even 25, that's a lot of chicken nuggets, and we're now outside of my chicken nuggets analogy. Okay. 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 I just want to stay out of the chicken nuggets. And Not I'm trying to, but I'm spread, I'm trying to spread the word because I think there are companies that are still using increments of chicken nuggets to try to get somebody to take, take a load. And sure. I'm here to point out, you know, if that worked, for 10 years or whatever it just needs to stop it's time to make it stop you just mentioned you know these penalties in freight that was a 50 that was a hundred nobody said ten dollars no oh no 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 the, the, especially these uh big delivery locations infamous in the grocery uh type space uh anywhere between 100 and 250 dollar fines some places 500 dollar fines you know right. and, and try to tell the dot you're gonna pay them in chicken nuggets Right. right. Well, these aren't fines AOT. It's like paying the the you know right. the cold storage warehouse. Like you, they're going to just deduct five hundred dollars because you were, you know, two hours late or, or whatever. You know, whatever it is you did that they didn't like. You know, I mean that's you know, pretty. The, the punishment, and the crime don't fit. So all you end up doing as as that receiver, right? Assuming let's just assume the receiver's paying for the freight in this instance. All you're doing is making all the drivers, all the carriers in the area, you, they know who you are now, right? You're a pain in the ass to deal with. Right. It, it does get talked about. Deal. Yes. So what do you think happens to the rates? Whereas I could normally pay, uh, you know, from Detroit to Chicago, I could pay someone $500 to, to do that load. Oh, it's going to this place? Eh, I need six fifty, right? Well, so all they're doing is raising their rates to, yeah. to every carrier that's willing to go in there because they keep punishing people. Well, and that's why, I mean, I think uh, what you saw – in the first quarter of this year was people taking loads from companies and, and holding their nose while they did it. They just did it. Even though the load sure. and the rates stunk, they took it anyways because they didn't know what to do. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's... Which gets that's, us back... Well, that gets into... That, and that brings us into the... I mean, those are the... In, you know, that's the recipe of your business. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we kind of got into it the other day. I mean, if you're talking like the market. Yeah, we did. Like, that's right. That's also on the list. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the who sets people, the rates. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Who sets number one? Who sets the rates? Nobody. I mean, really sets the rates, right? The, the driver, the carrier sets the rates, right? The drive, not the driver, right? The driver's too far from the freight to really have an impact. They're they're too far removed, but they're not the lead the driver. Impact, so I agree with you. They're they're the too carrier. far removed. They're the first ones to get punished by it, but they're the last ones to have an impact. Right, but the carriers do set the rate. Right, the carrier who's willing to take the load for the lowest price sets the market. So 
a broker or a shipper in this case, right? You know, no matter how you look at it, or a third party logistics company, they're going to pressure test downward pressure until finally they hit the floor, right? Okay, at, at 50 bucks a unit, no, you know, 45 bucks a unit, no one's willing to do it. At 50 bucks, we got some action. So now they're going to try and cover everything at 50 bucks a unit. And until they can no longer cover 50 bucks a unit, then okay, well, we're not getting any action. We're going to start bumping it back up, you know? And then and they're just trying to find the floor, the floor, the floor. Um, you know, and, and like someone just wrote in the comments, they're like, ah, oh, you're gouging me, right? Okay, it's not a gouge per se, right? But I know that's the perception. But like you said, he's like, I'm going to gouge you later. Well, no, the ceiling of the, the market tends to go higher, 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 and drivers hold out. And now in a market like we're in, you know, people are willing to pay to skip the line because you have, you know, inventory shortages and, you know, there's other things going on in the marketplace that needs to make vehicles move. So the, the new floor is here where, you know, whatever, even two months ago it was much, you know, off the screen, you know, I mean, down here. So, well, but I think as we see that, that I think the disparity is, is that in a market like today, we're talking, uh, we're talking high inventory of vehicles that need to get moved. By the way, do we have any information on, did we lose a significant amount of carriers due yeah. to COVID yeah. and, and loss of business? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah I mean, guy, guy, you know, do you think you could? Today. Do you think you could measure a percentage? Just even. I mean, I don't know. That's the thing. You know, here's here's the here's the issue I I have with doing that, right? And and, and you know, and I think most people in your chat know, and, and I've talked about you know with you before. The barrier to entry in, into the into the space is pretty low, right? And as far as like a carrier or an owner op kind of closing shop and moving to another, like say, hey, I, I no longer want to be part of your fleet. I'm not going to lease on with you. I'm going to lease on with somebody else. That happens. There's so much movement. And that's yeah. part of you. You kind of touched on it. How do I manage all this, this massive carrier base, right? And, and in the auto hall, yeah. it's very difficult because it's very fluid. And guys move on and they start new MCs over and over and over. So there are a ton of carrier failures, right? I think that's just right out of the gate. We know there were carrier failures. Um, right. During any time. But during now, any time. In COVID. If due, to co due to COVID or, or maybe COVID just put them over the edge, right? I mean, yeah. I would tell you a lot of the, a lot of the failures were probably somewhat mismanaged companies, right? Some companies just had all their eggs in a basket, not their fault, right? I mean, it just, it's unfortunate. It's a black swan event and it was nobody's fault. It wasn't really market driven. The government shut down the economy and, um, you know, the bodies lay where they lay. Right. Talk about yeah. external factors. Yeah. I mean, who and, can and see that coming? Nobody could have seen it coming. No one could have planned for it. But I think there were companies that just ran probably not the best operation, right? Did they plan for having, hey, what happens if your customers go away for three months? Right? Not that everyone thinks that way, but like, hey, maybe we shouldn't over leverage. Maybe we shouldn't overextend. Maybe it's not the, the best time to, you know, kind of fly by the seat of your pants over and over and over and over. Um, you know, why don't we like, you know, not just be profitable, right? A lot of these carriers are like, well, we're profitable. Okay. Well, <laughs> what does that mean? How are you profitable? What if, what if the market changes? What if customers go away? Like, you, are you really saving? Right. Well, this is where, yeah, revenue doesn't always equal profit. Right. So, so you have, I think, just natural failures fall off because of COVID. I think you had some carriers that were on the tipping point anyway that just couldn't survive any type of event, no matter what it was going to be. I think you said a lot of folks retire. You know, average age of the driver in the industry, in the auto hauling industry, I don't know. Industry-wide, it's about 57 years old. So I think you had a lot of folks that were like, you know, I'm just going to hang it up and go do something else. Um, I like, did I see some of that on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. They, well, I, well, they don't want to put themselves at risk, right? Especially the older, you know, generation of drivers. Why would they, why, why is a driver going to go risk his neck, especially when COVID first, you know, kind of broke out and I'm going to send them up to deliver units into Washington where this is the epicenter of the pandemic. Oh yeah. Sure, not like, no, exactly. no like, there's, there's no oh, way. Yeah. Right. right. So I, I think it, a lot of drivers exit. Um, it was a good good time for them to exit. Just like and probably still yeah. about to exit. You must have, yeah. there must be, right, some that haven't fully exited. Yeah, well, they may be taking advantage. Now they saw the, the market turn and they're like, well, I could probably hold off. But as hey, soon as it, it turns and, back, they're like, the okay. Market, well, hey, and the market turn might save a few. Hopefully yeah. it should. Yeah. Right, a little 401k for, uh, you know, for the next, uh, you know, couple months or however long uh, the market's hot for. But yeah, so I mean, I think there was failure. So I think you had a capacity crunch for sure. You had a lot of carriers that just didn't know the future, right? Like any business, right? I think a lot of people were furloughed, right? In general. So even large carriers, medium sized carriers that have oh, a lot yeah. of Oh, yeah. Right. So, so dry, exactly. Yeah. Drivers got furloughed or customers furloughed had to furlough a carrier that they yeah. liked. 
Sure. Yeah. But if I'm if I and I want to name any names, right? But like if In I'm fact, a that makes people, me think of OEMs. I, yeah. That exactly. actually really that one I really would like to know. But Some think the, about right. Think about that from from like a like a large carrier, like one of the large three hundred exactly. to thousand truck operations. Right. They tend to have very OEM heavy contracts, so right. their business literally went from whatever moving ten thousand units a month to nothing goose egg overnight done. Right. So right. what do you do? You can you can try and plug the holes and kind of play, and you have broker relationships, load boards. You may get some remarketing units, but that, those are your backhauls. That's closing your loop. Exactly. And that's just that's what I mean. Monetizing. So your main revenue generator. That's a cliff. Is going. So in the interest of not shutting the company down, you're like, well, we might as well furlough 80 percent of our drivers, moth all the trucks, and we'll just kind of wait it out. And as business started coming back, if you're a smart business owner, which they were, to get to where they're at and to have the foresight to furlough and and make decisions they did, they're not just going to all of a sudden see, well, well, there's units. We need to bring back 300 drivers. No, Let's start with 300 OEMs, stuff. even though OEMs are open, and I like this because we're at the top of my 10-part wheel, even though mm-hmm. OEMs are open, they're not cranking out vehicles, and they won't be for well, I don't even know how long. Well, they're trying to save money. Right, so they're they're in a they're in a sticky situation. They're um, in a real tough you know, situation. And, you know, they they were this year was another seventeen million dollar. Do you see the million billion years. dollar losses on the automakers? Yeah. And they That's and their insane. stock went up. Their stock went up because of that news. Okay, which is twisted, but that's how <laughs> that bad the twisted. market expected them to do, and they didn't. Right, the market. Everyone was like, "Whoa." They're going to lose billions of billions. They're like, actually, we only lost like four billion, and the market's like, not so bad. So their stock shot up a little bit. It, it's it's <laughs> did, wild. Did you see the article? It said it said something like the amount of money that automakers have received from government stimulus is absurd. I think that was the title. It's crazy. It's a lot, but I mean, that's you know, I, I mean, I guess if, to get people riled up in the chat here, look at look at well, YRC. Well, right? I, I mean, YRC received. A bailout of bailouts. I mean, that company was in, in dire straits, and they received more money from the government than their companies, were, right? And now you wow. see news articles about YRC, like, hey, we're reinvesting, we're buying all these new trucks, and we're upgrading our facilities and doing all this stuff. Yeah, the government just handed you, a, you know, a blank check essentially to do reinvest in your own company, um, which is wild. Like, why? Why did they deserve to to get this or not? I, you know, I don't know, but that's the you Too know big again to fail. Back to, uh, yeah the government I mean, contracts I, do they have government you know, contracts is it is it for gms fca is anybody's fault that you know the the government decided to shut down the country to hey it's right. illegal to open a car dealership right i mean that was that was it here in michigan we're very locked down as everyone probably knows right yeah right and you made it illegal Governor to Whitmer. right yeah that's, that's her <laughs> <laughs> i'll keep it poli- i'll keep it politics neutral I, well and i you know what <laughs> For talking oh, oh. about, for talking well, and, about, uh, we did we did have our Michigan primaries today. Oh, nice! Hey, yeah. that's great, man. Well, we do we stay out of politics, but when you talk about COVID, I mean, I, I think we're being very kind. We're not like we're not going to get in the mud of politics on the show, but obviously, politics comes into play when you're talking about bailout money, and and it really is. I mean, <laughs> it's this is a tough one, and I'm glad I don't work in politics, and I never have wanted to, uh, but. You, you need some form of bailout, stimulus, whatever you want to call it. But then when you look at the back end on the on like the national debt, like yeah. did, have we just given up on paying that off? Well, who cares? The number doesn't even make sense, <laughs> right? I mean, nobody nobody can rationalize that number anymore, right? It's like 20 some trillion dollars. I actually pulled it up on Industry News oh, a couple oh, weeks ago just 23 trillion? What is oh, it? It's, I I don't remember, but it's insane. It is insane like, trillion. At this point, who cares? I think I think it's actually we hit kajillion or Google or whatever number is. It's a it's a it's an insurmountable number that will yeah. never be paid. But there's never going to be a plan to pay it back. It's just now you're creating plans to somehow pay down the debt payments. I mean, ludicrous. It's, That's it's the term bad. from Spaceballs. And, they hit ludicrous, ludicrous speed. And it's yeah, fat. Ludicrous. I mean, listen, if, if you look back in the '90s, I mean, we're talking a couple trillion. You know what I mean? Like, you know, Bill Clinton era was what, like three trillion or two trillion? I and then when it was, hit eight, everybody I freaked out at eight. Yeah. And I was like, well, eight, holy, <laughs> I mean, I'll take eight. You know? And that was only a decade ago. I mean, right. it's, it's oh, so I guess, yeah. So I guess at this point, we're just trying to keep the mothership in some, somewhat intact as we travel through ludicrous speed. It, now you just measure, right? Because yeah. there's a whole, you know, it's boring, right? You get into the economics of the world, right? But now it's just what is. 
the debt like ratio of to GDP. And as long as you stay and remember, there's countries that are like 170. Well, I think our I think our like GDP is negative, is, though. Don't we have a negative GDP? No, we can't have a negative GDP. Our GDP is. I think it maybe had a negative growth for the first okay, time. The ever, negative like, growth. I think you're right. But That's as a percent of GDP, either. we're like 40 something or less than 40 percent, whatever the ratio is. Right? We're we're low. We're actually very healthy, you know, in terms of that ratio. And you look at countries like Japan that are 180 percent debt of GDP, where you're like, how did you know? They're they're fine, you know. I mean, whatever fine means, but they're they're operating. They're still a country. So what what's another twenty trillion? I guess I you know. Oh, I mean, it's like just keep in mind. Keep in mind the price goes. The the cost is passed on to someone somewhere, right? Everyone is paying more for everything right now. Those those are the folks that are listening. That they're into um, camping and power sports and cars and all sorts of stuff. The price of all that has gone up, and collectibles. The prices of all those markets is shooting up right now because people got. Uh, large unemployment. They got stimulus checks. There's uh, more people spending time at home. No one's traveling. So you've created this artificial market now. People are like, well, I can't. I'm not going to get on a plane, but I can jump in an RV and go camping. And now, I'm well, camping, that's the thing. And, See, you know. that's the thing is that if if your stimulus money is now your discretionary income, is yeah. that the is that that's the cool. is that the goal? <laughs> I mean, I mean it, if you think about it, right? So if you think about truthfully, yes, right? If it's truly stimulus money, so money given to you're people stimulating the for economy. the sole purpose of them spending it, you've achieved that goal, so, sort of. Is that why we're not totally in the toilet because of the stimulus yeah. money? You no, know, you know, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we've been, we've, I think we've been staring over the cliff too long. I'm starting to get a little freaked out um okay so oems all right good so we talked about oems um auctions let's talk about auctions yeah which kind of auctions now you have you have your different types of auctions right you exactly have, you pick of the letter right there's the physical you auctions yeah you've got virtual which virtual has been around a while right but now you have these, these wholesaling tools that are sort of like so they you know, have based auctions the and stuff, digital right? auctions have been around but haven't seen the kind of growth and adoption like i mean it's gone crazy yeah yeah i think there's i mean you look at uh you know i'm, just gonna, I'm gonna name names because it's a good example but look That's at the, cool. the car offer car offer started in september of uh, of last year and they've, they've grown i see their stuff on linkedin all the time they're they're, they're going like crazy um, you know, Trade Row is another one you've seen a lot of growth. Trade Row, which is that's Car Globals. Yeah, they got bought. Yeah, they got they were a Canadian company that got bought. Um, you've seen ACV auctions. Yo, huge. Uh, they're, they're probably so crazy. Probably the fastest growing. That's what because yeah, I mean they're really cool. they've really done a great job of, of growing Auction Edge, which yeah, is they're Edge. putting together the independent auctions. Right, the independents want their own you know something their own virtual type of tool. So right, and they can't about. develop that in house. Yep. Which is kind of like, a, it, sidebar, it's kind of like the carrier that wants a TMS but can't find one they like. If you're a big enough carrier, you build your own software. Yeah. But yeah. if you're not big enough, like an independent auto auction, yeah, go with Auction Edge. You, all you want to, it's, it's, a good, it's a compelling story from Auction Edge to go to a, an independent auction and be like, hey, do, do you want the ability for people to be able to, you know, do you want your depth and breadth, your reach of your, your auction units that you're bringing customers for to reach more people? And be able to compete at a national level uh, with with the big dogs. Yeah, I would love that very much, right? Well, okay, cool. And you kind of join this consortium of other independents, and and here's your units, and everyone can simulcast and bid. Now you're able to compete at a, a different scale than you were previously. I think that's a very compelling story from them, and it's a big value added service to the the auction. So it's it's been successful. It is. And when you people. see the tools. Like I don't, I don't know how much time. Like if you if you get to see like V Auto tools or, I mean some of those tools are amazing. I know that there's nothing like being at the physical auction, for a lot of buyers and you know dealers and networking. But the amount of, uh, the amount of information available on one of these tools, and then if you have, you could have several auctions going at the same time on different windows. I mean, yeah, but who who wants to be at an auction right now? What company? Well, there are doing- some. Well, that leads us in dealers, but there are some companies that want to be at auctions. Very well, not as a buyer, right? If I'm a large corporate entity and I'm some gonna buyers, send people but out the, as a buyer, like onto the to physically touch cars, I mean, you're taking on liability now, right? So I think the large, the more corporate companies. Well, now have you're getting into philosophy, but I mean, some buyers want to be at physical auctions, sure. and some sure. companies rely on that uh, physical relationship. 
to be as part of their business model. But if you're the big dog, right, or one of a couple big dogs that buy in large swaths, do you, you're going to get what you want anyway. Right? Well, you're, so you're, you're going to adopt the software, software. you're going to train right. your folks, and you're going right. to go digital. Yeah. Right. And why, and why, why waste the money of having people there and do what they're doing? You know, just hey, I'm on a laptop. I have, I have six monitors, and I've got a couple assistants, and we're we're cranking away, and we can exactly. do the work of a number of buyers, right? We have our list, right? I mean, it's not the buyers don't get to make that many decisions anymore at that level, right? Here's the list of stuff we want. Get well, it. the software tells you what to buy. In fact, and, there might and, be a, a day where the software buys it. The software yeah. buys from another software. Well, that, that's what some of these apps and stuff are doing that we talked about, right? You set your parameters. Hey, I'm looking for units that are 10 years old, 100,000 miles, um, you know, that are four-wheel drive trucks. Go and alert me every time one pops up. And they get a little text. Yep, one for auction. Want it? Yes. And you get to bid and you get, you know, whatever it is, 30 seconds or five minutes or whatever they're doing. And I mean, come on. I just I just well, bought units that, and instantly. What exactly what I wanted was pushed to me, and I and I'm walking around doing my normal job and still able to, to make purchases. That's another thing. Exactly the speed at which you can buy vehicles. Yeah. Now you're not waiting on some physical auction to happen. No, why well, wait till every Wednesday? Or, you exactly. Know, but that's still where the that's where the action is, right? I mean, they they push tens of thousands of units through the the physical auctions, right? They have hundreds of lanes and. And that's the game, right? And a lot of a lot of the the, the consigners have prime time lanes, right? You know, you the big dog consigners have fifteen lanes. Boom, we're prime time. We get to go when we want to go, and and there's thresholds. They're guaranteed certain returns and things. And, and remember, a lot of their costing models, right, for the, the quants in the background that create depreciation and everything that for the finance companies, it's based upon the you know basically the the business at an auction right how what do the transactions go for what these vehicles go for and there's all kinds of arithmetic goes out in the background so if your model fits selling your units at the physical auction now you have a story to tell investors essentially like we always get this residual right and it's because we sell it you know manheim or odessa in, in these various ways i'm going to ask the question right now because maybe somebody's asking well, you know what, Jay, that's all fine and dandy, but I am a, uh, I'm a car hauler. Why do I need to know this stuff? Yeah, well, I mean, I guess that depends if, uh, if your car hauler wants to have customers <laughs> and be in tune with the industry and have intelligent conversations with, with direct shippers, right? Or if you, you, you're happy playing the load board game or working with brokers. And I, I wouldn't say there's a right or wrong answer, but a lot of people are quick to complain. Well, the brokers do this to me or... The load board sock or whatever it is. Well, you know, listen, there's nothing stopping from a carrier from developing a sales guy or a saleswoman to be able to go in and have intelligent conversations with these companies, right? I mean, there's there's a, a scope of business that limits, you know, small carriers, right? I mean, you have to be able to add enough value for someone to onboard you, right? If you're a one truck operation and you're going to, you know, a Fortune Five finance company, it's probably hard to tell a compelling story, but you can go into dealers and understand this. Something. Hey, how are you? How are you wholesaling your units? Oh, you're using these apps. Oh, that's really cool. How are you getting those there? Oh, the app takes care. That's cool. Uh, what are you doing to buy? Oh, you buy this way. Are you? You know, are you using the transportation service offering here? Well, no, we like to do it ourselves. We buy it too. Okay, cool. Well, hey, I could be that guy for you. You buy locally, right? You're trying to develop a customer base, and you have to speak intelligently, right? Being able to just walking into a dealer should be like, hey, I have a car hauler. Call me sometime. Here's my card. You know, you're you're. You're done, right? <laughs> Your card's going in the circular filing cabinet, you know. So if you want to be able to to have a narrative, build a customer base, have your own, you know, customers and shipments you can rely on, it's all important stuff to know, right? And and to be in tune with the business, the industry you're in, you should be knowledgeable, right? If you want to just drive a truck, and and that's your industry is just being behind the wheel, okay, that's great. You know, I how many trucks, you know, how many trucks I've loaded in my life, right? Like uh, actually loaded cars, not very many. Right, so my, I've, my never, life, I've never done it, and I yeah. so I know some people hold that against me, um, but I I could turn around and say, well, I don't hold it against you that you don't know as much yeah. about what's going on behind the scenes, but I suggest yeah. you learn it, and right. in fact, I think Ty has said, hey Jay, I think you should probably help me load a few cars. I think I probably yeah. I probably should. That's yeah, probably, I, that's I a know, pretty good I, idea. I I know what drivers go make through. a video. I've been, I, I've been part of the process, right? I've been on site for these sorts of things, right? So I understand what I, I'm empathetic to the the circumstances going on, but I can take that info and then relay it to my my customers and say, hey, you know, here's why we're having a hard time moving units right now. Here's what's going on. You know, there's a hurricane. I don't know if you noticed this, but there's four inches of rain that just dumped out of Virginia yesterday. 
is probably not the most optimal loading conditions. It's going to take an extra day or two to get uh, your stuff moving. By the way, is that part of what? Why are freight volumes about to go up in August? Did you see that headline? Uh, yeah, I saw that. I think they're oh freight just in general. Freight in general, stuff yeah. Because why? Stuff can be open. Everything's opening back up. Everything's opening it's, back it's up. Listen, is it opening let, back up? I'll tell you this. Here's going to be the linchpin, whether that article's accurate or not. Right? Is there a back to school season? I think so, but. I can't tell sometimes. If you're, if kids are going back to school, that's usually what happens. You get a summer law for July in the freight world, and then back to school season in August puts you through into then the retail season and fourth quarter, Christmas, yada, yada, yada. If you're not going to go and have children at school and have a back to school season, you know, you're, you're going to miss out on that. Right. There's you're going to miss that that big push. We better have kids. I mean, you know what I mean? Like we yeah. we better have back to school season. I'll say it that way. Right uh if for some reason that doesn't happen it's almost like the sports trying to get back and they're having hiccups with you know somebody got covid or somebody you know that those setbacks it's hard to tell what will happen well you know i think uh i think parents need to be able to work (laughs) right oh my gosh no doubt the parents are going crazy driver is hey my kid number one my kids need to go to school there's a lot of factors right we can get real deep you know and especially here in michigan we have a problem with students don't get fed when they're home from school right that that's right Uh, well and actually that seems to be a national problem it's it's pretty pretty tragic and in the summertime there are programs in our area that that help kids get three meals a day when they're out of school in summer because they they will go without food right it's a known thing You know, so you're going to extend that. You're going to, you know, I mean, you're hurting kids in a lot of ways. You have a lot of kids in bad situations beyond, obviously, just not being able to have a a meal every day. Yeah. Um, And you can put them in worse circumstances, worse situations. On top of that. Well, yeah, that's right. That's right. If you you have a a a tough tough home situation. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen? If you have to go to work, you know, to to put a roof over your head, to pay the light bill, to pay the heat and and, and live your life. And you've got little kids at at home. What decision are you making if you're an impoverished person? Yeah, I have to go to work and make money. Whatever happened to those kids? Well, and, and it's interesting you say that. I, I, again, I, I want to stay out of politics, but it's important. I saw a headline talking about, it was a video of a guy trying to explain to other protesters that, listen, I just, I, I just want to go to work. Can you just get off the highway so I can get to work? You're, you're really, you're not helping. You know, if you're protesting on the highway... Like, can we not do that so I can get to work? I'm like one of the few people left that still has a job. And I'm about to lose it because you're protesting on the highway. (laughs) Those protests, I mean, that's been their full-time job for the last, you know, (laughs) for weeks, you know, to be out there protesting. It'd be really hard to be a trucker. And I mean, how do you need a protest app? That's something we take into account. Funny you say that. I mean, we, we do look at that. So we look at, like I said, we mentioned hurricanes. So it's like, hey, hurricanes are a factor. Weather, when there's storms, whatever. We look at civil unrest as being problems. And when uh, we have an office on the West Coast, uh, and the downtown was destroyed. So our office, the first floor of our office building oh, wow. was destroyed. So, you know, imagine to, trying to deliver some units, pick up some units in Long Beach. And while, you know, the, I thought you, you know, were yeah, going, in California, yeah, it's not going to happen. Right. I mean, you know, so there's factors between why I can't, you know, pick up units, deliver units on time and why rates may be that the way they are. Right. I mean, people may fear. They're like, hey, listen, I've, I've seen what happens to people who go into these areas in St. Louis and, um, you know, Minneapolis or, or uh, L.A. So, right. Drivers and, like, uh, you want me to go there? I need hazard and, pay. And, right? and I'm going to need more than chicken home. nugget pay. Yeah. <laughs> for sure putting their equipment at risk putting their lives at risk and you know uh, i don't i don't blame actually them. how much pay makes protest hazard worth it i mean i don't know the drivers, i don't know man like the carrier set the mark again like, yeah, we're gonna go back to the floor how well, much and I'm, I'm so glad we did that's, that's cool we just came away from another ledge because uh to from one ledge to another that's auto transport you know it may be in a market like right now okay again where inventory's high I guess there's less carriers than there were, and so rates are high. In a market such as this, it, it would appear that carriers set the rates. But let's go back six months. Carriers, mm-hmm. I mean, constantly were saying, I feel like I have no control here. 
Jay, <laughs> who was taking the units six months ago? Who hauled it? That's the thing is, and, and pr- it's interesting. Now what we're talking about is if if six months ago, desperate carriers set the rates. Yes. That's still yeah. different from non-desperate carriers. What's a, de- what's a desperate carrier, non-desperate carrier? If, if, if carriers out there well, are like, hey. Now we're getting into maybe not everybody should get into this business. And, <laughs> right. and then that yeah. seems to be a topic nobody wants to talk about. Actually, it's it's well, all sure. it's, it's like talking about only dispatchers are illegal. Really? You got carriers that Ill, are illegally brokering. You, oh, that's yeah. a really yeah. unpopular topic. That's common. That's very common today. I think it is. In, in the freight world, so in freight, yeah. a double broker situation is you're dead to the industry. Right, you get caught doing that. You're a scumbag. There's going to be a freight guard uh, reports on you, TIA watchdog reports. You're probably going to be turned off, and I'm going to write reports and try and get everybody in the broker world to never use you again because you're known as a double broker carrier. In auto transport, <laughs> I mean, it's like That's a Monday. You know, what I mean? it's like what is going on? The first time I started doing that, you know, was got in the auto industry because I come from freight, 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 and there's a certain level of you know, like just accepted norms and mores in that industry that don't exist in, in auto hauling. And it's almost like, well, yeah, it's just my cousin. And I just gave him the load. And you're like, Oh, wait a minute. Like, <laughs> you can't just do that. And not let me know. Like, well, you know, that's not all right. Uh, but it, it seems to happen all the time. And, and it's a real problem. I think, I think it's a massive problem. In, uh, in well, auto. this is where, yeah, well you, I mean, there are folks that, I mean, they're ready to pick up a torch and go after like a load board. Right, and I said a load board without just coming out and saying what might seem quite obvious to many, and that is that you know if you've got the most popular load board with mm-hmm. clearly the most loads and the most carriers, and it's rampant with you know bad transactions. Well, I mean that's that's the fault of the parties that participate in that marketplace. And I would agree with you. Yeah, I mean, you know, we don't... Uh, and, I, and that load board would say the same thing. Listen, we just put up the technology. We well, can't. they can't play too innocent because they... Exactly. Do but they, but that's because they involve themselves. They they put themselves in it. They don't remain agnostic, as, as they would claim, right? They do well, take on insurance certs and do a background check. If they were like, hey, we're just a marketplace. It's the Wild West. Buyer beware. Then I'd be like, okay, everyone knows what they're getting into. But they should rename it Wild West Buyer Beware Load Board. But, but to be fair, that's a selling point for me to go out to customers, right? And I tell them, I'm like, hey. I think you're know? right. Do you know who's coming I to come? I think you're right people? because and what they like, do is. I don't know. They they t- <laughs> well, they talk about their other product is like a white glove service. Um, but when I heard the number of carriers on that white glove service versus the number of carriers that they, you know, have, they feel like they have automated relationships with. They can just send them loads. It was like one percent of the carriers on the on their white glove list. Because well, that, that, I mean, the, that other entity which is gets us back into managing carrier lists. It's got to be crazy. <laughs> well, that their other entity, their white gloves. I'm, I'm going to assume I know what you're talking about here because you're you're being coded. It's like watching. Uh, I'm talking in code, man. Uh, they're, they're a broker. You're talking it's about 2020. The, they're, they're they're a broker. Right. So, yeah, they're well, white that's gloves. another thing. And I've actually asked that question. Are they a broker? Yes. Or yes. Are... not the load board, but this white glove service is a load board or not a load board, a broker. Uh, they're broker. The white glove load board is a broker. They're broker. If it's what I'm, if it's what we're talking about, that's a broker. Where, whereas the Wild West load board is the just load a load board. board is a load board. A, right. It's, you know, in, in freight, you, we have DAT, right? And DAT is two different energy. services. Yeah, dial a truck or DAT, uh, rate view, uh, power, whatever. That DAT, is the ubiquitous load, load board in freight. In DAT freight. is a load board. And, and anyone can post. Now, only tends to be only brokers using it, uh, but shippers can get on there if they really wanted to. But it's so much work. Like for shippers that want to use load boards, it's a pain in the ass, number one, right? Like who wants to manage all these relationships and post loads and deal with all the bullshit that comes with that? Like why, why would you ever want to do that? So That's why you hire a broker. Really that concern because broker handles all the minutia that goes along all the pain the ass work in this business right this business is just filled with red tape and just it, nuance that's unnecessary oh, Don't take a lot of that away the more right? you but find that, out about the fmcsa the more you just 
question everything. It's a nightmare, right? But how do you make sure this carrier has the right insurance? How do you make sure that they have the right safety? Like, you know, here's the deal. If, if you load, if you're a shipper and you load somebody that's underinsured and, you know, they kill somebody in an accident, I hope you know everyone gets oh named in that God. lawsuit. Uh, everyone involved. So amen. if it's my unit, my name's on it. If you're the if you're the dealer, your name's on it. If you bought it, your name's on it. If you're the driver, your name's on it. If you're the carrier's name. Everybody that they can pinpoint is going to be listed in that lawsuit. And there is no amount of chicken nuggets that will help no. you then. No, you got to deal with it. You get yeah. you're paying at the very least. You're, you're out of pocket five grand or so to just have a lawyer go just through to defend and, yourself and do discovery with mm -hmm. them and well, show that right. hey, I'm, I'm interrogatory. Yeah, like, you know, about, about, forget about it. Yeah, so it's a nightmare. So you're you're kind of paying for peace of mind, right? What's a broker do? Well, we offer peace of mind to, to customers, right? That's one of the value adds. We handle all the minutia. If that driver decides just not to pick up your unit, which just shockingly happens all the time. Like, ah, I got busy, I didn't feel like it. Or, oh, I'm just you might have dodged unit. a bullet. <laughs> right? But, but then, you know, but as a broker, I have that unit to move. I'm moving it no matter what. I have my three day SLA. I'm getting it done. If they're just on their own trying to post and, and pray and hope stuff gets done, there's no guarantee that anyone's going to grab. If they do grab, do they know this guy's going to be there on time or pick it up? Like, what's their plan? Do you know? Do you know anything about this individual? You know what's in the load boards database, which I don't know if is regularly updated or not or vetted in any meaningful way uh, versus how we do it, right? We're, we're very vetted. People on here who I know are carriers for us, they can tell you. Like, up front, there's steps to get involved in to work with us that seems cumbersome on the front end. But it keeps everybody protected. And then once you're kind of through that, you're good to go. And you're a safe carrier. Now you're being monitored. Your insurance is in. Great. We'll communicate directly with your insurance company. Get all updates. Don't even have to worry about insurance. In. Uh, you give us your contacts. Cool. They're in there. We'll deal with that. So they're and they get paid. You want quick pay? Cool. Here's how you get quick paid and you're, and you're done. And then you're self-service from there on out. Well, and that also explains why your clients want to work with you. Because Absolutely. you're at a level where you're not just talking about one car and one check. You're talking about how many cars, how many yep. states, I wanna, how many we, dates, wanna, what do you got? Yeah, I mean, we can approach large shippers, large consigners, large remarketers, large OEMs, and, and tell a compelling story about why you would want to work with us versus an asset-based company. And I know that frustrates a lot of people. They're like, why aren't you just going to the asset-based guys? It's like, well... Think about a finance company, okay? They have tens of thousands of vehicles monthly that are moving. What asset-based carrier can really support that level of business in a meaningful way, right? The reason why they can engage with OEMs is the OEMs have, like, you know, so many fixed locations, right? There's only so many plants and so many ports that exist, right? So it's easy. Hey, there's 20 of them, right? And they move tens of thousands of cars a week through them. Yeah, it's easy. They're all there. They're in one spot and you know where they're going. There's this many dealers here and there's this many cars here. Move them. So it, it makes it really easy for the, the large you know, asset guys to have that. But imagine having 10, you know, we'll call it thousands of dealerships and repo agents across the U.S. that now you have to pick up onesie, twosie cars from to take them to auction every single day. Right. That That's the business of a finance company. Well, and they know. go through their own cycles and seasons. And, and how is an asset-based carrier supposed to engage in that? It's nonsense, right? It's so impossible. Whereas you could bring a logistics company and they're like, okay, cool. I can look at this. I can engineer this. There's there's a network. This carrier works good here. This carrier works good here. And by the time you put together their entire kind of program or right, the solution, you're dealing with hundreds of different carriers. We have our own team that makes sure the units are validated and things like that. So if there's problems, we have a resolution line to make sure that when a driver shows up, it has keys, runs, steers, drives, et cetera. And if it doesn't, we got a plan. Um, so there's a lot of value add that, that working with a broker, any broker. I mean, it doesn't have to be RPM, but like right. any, any, and you know, growing, that, you can do this. growing that level of business. Yeah. I mean, that would take years and good team members and right it's tough. It's tough business, especially right now, because imagine those contract rates are set at another time in history. And now we're faced with this time in history. And uh, yeah, what's that can... like? <laughs> I mean, uh, that's well, got a lot of tap dancing. Do you do you know what uh, do you know what a flail is? Flail, like the medieval. I was just say medieval what? weapon. Yeah. yeah, it's like it's like being hit in the head with one of those repeatedly every day, thousands of times a day. It's probably a very similar experience to that. <laughs> well, this is where I I mean, have customer expectations. You know, is there a? I always whenever I talk to a broker, I'm like, 
do you feel like you spend a certain amount of time fighting incorrect customer expectations? No, you set the expectation. Or, or you've agreed Very to interesting. It. You or set the rates and the expectations. Yeah. yeah, right. Do you really? I mean, but... You do, because people... you agree to do it. If a customer yeah. says, I need this to happen, and you're like, I'll do it. <laughs> Steve Ressler would say, Jay, that's your head trash happening again. But yeah. I... I, I, maybe I'm a pessimist. Well, I'm, there's no maybe about it. But the thing is, I, I, I feel like we we see instances where people have made assumptions based yeah. on whatever. And well, I and I and I don't know if it's the chicken nuggets. Again, I'm never I'm not going to let go of this because I don't think carriers get paid enough during a negotiation. You know, hey, I can't take that car. Well, how about another five bucks? You negotiation know who, with, well, negotiation between like like a broker, whether and... it's a load board or a broker, the amount of money, and I know this because I was a dispatcher and I saw it day after day with different people. I mean, it, there's this constant, there's this pervasive understanding that when it comes time to negotiate on a load and you need more money, that they're gonna you're gonna go by increments of like five dollars. Like really? I'll tell you that. I'll tell and you I've that. actually argued over like five bucks. I actually I'll... spent twenty minutes on the phone with a broker, and I said, "I we're we're arguing over five bucks. And if you're really going to argue over five bucks, I'm going to keep you on the phone. I'm going to make you <laughs> waste that five dollars on the phone with me." Yeah, I, I would, you know, and, and I'm going to take I'm going to kind of compare freight to vehicle here, right? In the freight world, it is exp like posting. I don't know if you're using a load in the freight world. Posting a load with the rate in it is the exception. You right you post, in the freight world. Say it again. In you, the freight world. In the freight world. If I were to post a load on Dat today from Detroit to Chicago, whatever, I most likely ninety nine percent chance I would never post that load with the rate. I would wait for carriers to call me, and then I would tell them what I'm paying on the phone. So I'd say, Hey, I'm paying four fifty on that one. And then UJ would be like six fifty, be like nah man, nah, four seventy five. The sales guy is up my butt. Like there's no way that's gonna. He's gonna string me up if I ever pay that. I'm four seventy five, and he'd be like five fifty all day. That's what it goes for. I'd be like no man, five hundred. We're and that's it. Like I'm all in. Do you want it or not? Like my phone's ringing. What do you want to do? And uh, and that's the normal for freight. Like that's the the typical cadence. The 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 freight carriers start here and the brokers start here and you sort of work your way not in the middle but usually to reality somewhere in between and, you, and you're always trying to push that floor um, in that space in the vehicle space it's not like that i'm right everyone expects you to post with a rate if you're going to use the load board they want to see a published rate and then generally no one's negotiating on that rate or very little a negotiation ever happens off that rate. So it's almost like that's just taking this gospel and people are like, yep, 800 well, bucks, that's going to pay, it's done, you know? And then... And so okay. to me, that suggests we're in a marketplace where the, 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 the price of the loads has been set to work against the transporter. Because in the freight world, if you're negotiating 25, 50, 100, 200 on a regular basis, it would seem to me that's a marketplace that that has a higher puts a higher value on the you're, actual transportation. No, because you're talking about a single unit, a single car versus a truckload. So imagine a drive-in. You got to compare apples to apples. You know, on a single unit, Fair. yeah. If I do 10 bucks, but what if you can haul nine of those? Well, now it's really a hundred dollars essentially, right? And on a drive van load, that's probably what we're arguing—a hundred bucks. You know, depend if that you know. The, do you the scale. well? That, do, so let's compare apples to oranges. Do you think? Because I know this gets asked, and but you you can answer this. Do you think a freight driver makes a higher profit than a car hauler, or a car hauler makes a higher profit than a freight? carrier on average car, car haulers make more money than driving drivers. right and and but i what, think that's the, the job of a driving driver you know to bump docks <laughs> yeah. to bump load it up boop, 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 you know drive away <laughs> you know? like but but if you compare like a flatbed guy now you're starting to get into the more specialized type of business where they got to go out they got to tarp the load they got to chain it they got to check on it every so often right, right? I mean, there's there's definitely like a higher caliber of driver that gets involved in that um, so you get paid more. As a specialized but driver, you get paid more. Do reefer 
carriers get paid more than are they at the yeah. higher end of freight? Yeah, sure. It's risk. Yeah. So it's risk. Because risk and risk. Diesel fuel. You're doubling you're doubling diesel, but yeah, it's risk you're taking on, right? Because if your temperature swings a little bit, you're looking at a, a total loss type scenario. And there's lots of it, right? It's all still supply and demand. Right? Dry vans, there's millions of dry vans bumming around the right, world. Right, because that's and so much, many much types of goods. Yeah, and much less reefer and much less flatbed and then much, much less auto hauling. Right? Yeah, so I, I think size-wise, isn't auto haul like 10% the size of like general freight or less? I don't know. 1%. 1%? <laughs> about oh that. my gosh. I'm not exactly, just about 1%. Wow. Now, if you look at it, and people argue about how big the freight market is. You know, I've, I've seen numbers as high as $14 trillion as the kind of the, the freight market or whatever. But I mean, it's over a, tr it's a trillion plus over a trillion in. in I'm glad you, you know. said that. I, I have a few stats. I don't have them on screen. Because I try to put some stats together, but I've got, um, okay, 17 million new cars manufactured last year. Okay, which has been that way for the last few years. In and the that's US. not, and this year it's going to be, I heard it's more like around 14, 13. That's what they, they changed their model to 14. It can be as low as 12 that, or 10. That actually years. still sounds high, given what's know. going on. Because again, yeah. right now, I do not think that. I don't, I don't, I actually, I read like, yes, a couple automakers are near like 80% capacity. So I don't even know how that's possible because you're, uh, you're getting uh, your parts from all over. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's, that's the, that's the problem. global supply chain is very disrupted. Oh, it's, um, know, that, it's, so it's much not disrupted. Problem. It's a disaster. <laughs> Sit in on an automotive webinar and listen to a supply chain and logistics person talk and they're freaking out. Yeah, it's tough, and but I I, I think what you're going to see is uh, a a big move to nearshore manufacturing. Um, so you're going to see obviously the U.S. right with with Trump, right? I mean, you're going to especially if he wins here in November, you're going to see a big push to the U.S. Um, you're going to see Canada too, but you're going right, to well, you're going to see some more localization from, of supply. Mexico, and I think parts, Mexico, right. Mexico. Be, uh, agreed. Yeah, Mexico, that, will that's be our huckleberry. Local, for that's our time. local supplier. Yeah. Great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think quality wise, they're there. Um, and well, a lot of plants are already there. Yeah. A ton, right? It's a ton. Like, yeah, it's not. This is not a new and, idea. And to hop on a plane and get down to you know Monterey is you know it's a two hour flight from Dallas, right? But <laughs> even know, with versus COVID, a six hour flight to China. Even with COVID, now I was looking at okay. So in North America, in most popular ports in North America, Veracruz, Mexico, was number one. Veracruz is like the vehicle mecca too, and they move. Baltimore's like two millions and millions of vehicles through there, yeah. And then and so and with COVID, I had heard their plants were behind our plants. Yeah. So, so there's some more bad news. Well, I right? think we we bullied Mexico into opening before they were comfortable. Right. I mean, I think that's just what it came down to is that they had which plans. Is, which in itself is an interesting headline. How often do you see that one? Um, U.S. employees in Mexico want to do something. That, right. that kind of America awesome. makes <laughs> America makes Mexico uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm okay. All right. Um, now, 40 million used cars transported last year. Okay. 40 million. Whereas, if we said 17 million new cars manufactured, 20 20 million cars sold on wholesale. But 40 million used cars transported, something like that, yeah. for a total auto transport industry revenue of 11 billion last year ish. I mean, and that, some of those numbers, I mean, very wildly. Yeah. But um, now this is interesting. I saw this in an article. United Road in 2016 moved three and a half million vehicles. Okay. <laughs> Right, it'd be interesting. It'd be interesting. Yeah. I see now. I, I, that when I read that. I'm like, man, I'd like to see what are the current numbers and how does that shake out among the fleets? Because I've looked at like top 100 carriers in North America, and that's mostly freight. You actually you have to like really yeah. dig to find well, auto transport companies. Who's looking? Who's who's number one right now? Is Jack Cooper still number one? Are they? Well, they, so I think yeah. it's United Road. Uh, maybe but if you combine the logistics and their, their, their asset together, but yeah, you're right. I mean, but think about it, like, uh, you know, just, let's just pick on Jack Cooper. You know, how many, how many power units does Jack Cooper own? 
and operate, right? At their peak, 8,000? And they and then they went through a, a reorganization. So as we know from Hertz, in their BK reorganization, uh, well, unloading all the- sold to private equity and they've broken that company apart. Whatever, like that's so, called their heyday. Let's say in the last five years, right? 8,000 power but, units at their peak, right? Swift operates 80,000 power units, right? It's the disparity in size. And, and Swift is one of a handful of the, the largest, right? I mean, you go through the top 100 um, driving carriers and, and, you know, and logistics companies, and they're going to obliterate all the auto lines, right? I mean, Jack Cooper's what, a billion dollar company, maybe? United Road is, are they even touching a billion right now, United Road? And look at freight companies. You have a, a swath of brokers, 3PLs, asset-based, whether it's full truckload, flatbed, LTL, they're over a billion. I mean, hundreds of them. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, shoot. They've been around forever. Um, one of the other fleets. For was, uh, model? Uh, yeah. oh, oh, man, I can't remember their name. And that's why I'm still compiling, and I'm searching right now, I'm still compiling some of this data it is actually hard to put this data together. Yeah, it's, it, the, this industry is not well researched. There's it's not a good not. data source. Like, the, you know, I'll tell you, the freight world is analyzed over and over and over. Right. And so much investment dollars in it that you can slice and dice it a million ways and find out everything you want. Uh, the auto industry is a little bit more of a, a, a gray area. It's a little murky. Um you know, and I, I don't know why that is. Again, other than it's just, and, and I would tell <laughs> There's the Wild West. Not to, yeah, not to offend anybody, but I mean, you know, vehicle hauling is about where freight was 20 years ago in terms of sophistication and technology and expectation. Uh, you know, it just lags behind. I think it's just because it's a smaller industry. It's very different. It's very fragmented, right? I mean, if you could look at the, the one to three truck operations make up the vast majority of the capacity that's out in the market. Um, no one's really done a big consolidation uh, piece very successfully in that space. Um, and no one's really elevated it, you know, to, to where freight, I mean, freight now, I mean, that's where the investment dollars are going. It's just, it's yeah. just the reality. I think isn't, is reliable one of the bigger enclosed? Yeah, they're, I think they're the biggest enclosed. They might be? Yeah. 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 I don't know how many trucks that, well, so three oh, of this, yeah. this site says 350 units. Maybe, 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 I don't know. I, don't I mean, say, those are, I mean, those are nice rigs. It's a, oh, they're expensive. It's a half a million dollar piece of equipment. I mean, amazing. you can only haul five cars on that thing, though, right? It's, you know, they're, they're, right. they're crazy. That's right. Um, then you've got, okay, then we talk about, okay, let's talk about carriers on, let's again say, like, the biggest load board, number of carriers. Okay. So if we take, we know it's 10,000 plus. Is that, is that accurate? There's 10,000? I believe, it's, I believe it's 10,000 plus. Is there 10,000 MCs registered or 10,000 active MCs? Oh, that's another great question, which is another reason why it'd be almost impossible to manage a large fleet. When a company says we've got 8,000 users that are carriers, how do you know you really have 8,000? Well, I, we tote 30,000. And how do I know? Because each one's registered, monitored, vetted. Well, and here's and that's kind of this is actually why I'm getting into that is that I believe at your company you probably know. I'm I'm assuming I don't know how big the department is, but I'll bet you guys know a lot of your carriers. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, well, I mean, and the folks out here would tell you, right? I mean, for the most part, um, everyone here on the list that actually works with RPM, I saw a couple of people's names pop up. They probably talked to the same. Um, man or woman on the phone for RPM most of the time, right? Unless we get busy and they just kind of get tossed. So they probably have a pretty much a single point of contact that they deal with when they want to load. I saw Kevin's name came up and a couple other names come up. Yeah, um, I saw Tino in there. Yeah. yeah, Tino, yeah I, Tino. I used to know some of the names, but I don't book loads anymore. And so. Yeah, right. But you get to know and you, you know what they have, right? So we kind of try and build relationships where, you know. And they know what, what lanes I'm looking in. Exactly, right? Yeah. And we use software to help that too, right? So, Cassins, Johnny9938, Cassins, thank you. I told you, Cassins. You did? Yeah. Why are you ignoring me? I told you, Cass. I said Cass. <laughs> I didn't hear you, man. Yeah, no. they're, they're in the top five. Cassins is in the top five. Yeah, well, Cassins and, uh, and uh, Cooper basically split the U.S. in half. 
right? One road, one was west of Mississippi, one was east. Essentially, yes. how they looked at it. How they looked at it, but that's probably changed now a little bit. So, what do you think the other two are? So, if we said Cooper, Cassins, United Road, can you yeah. name the two others? We'll see. We'll, uh, so that'll be. We'll put that in the live chat. That's the bonus question for the live I mean, chat. I can slump some of the big guys in there. You got like Sierra. You got Moore. You got uh, Deluxe. Um, Brown, Supreme. Uh, now, yeah. You, well, yeah. The other accelerated. Lot accelerated and all those guys consolidated. So yeah, they're they're definitely big dogs now. So mm-hmm. um, you know, out on the East Coast, you've got kind of a. The mishmash, but like Adcock's pretty big, um, and then some of the other. I don't think JMN's <laughs> that big anymore. JMN's decently sized fleet, yeah. They're Are kind they? of. Pasha doesn't Pasha have some of the? Pasha's huge, yeah. Pasha's oh, huge. They do, Pasha. of, um, they do a lot of. They do a lot of Roro. So. Right, exactly. International, yeah. Which made me wonder as I was reading. I wondered if they had investment in vessel shipping. Yeah, I'm sure they're 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 the right. one, two providers to go to Hawaii. They set the market. You want to assess the market? They do. For oh, 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 which is <laughs> not the carrier. <laughs> bing, bing. What? Okay. Game in town, but that's, but that's part of part. you know what? But that's part of what I'm getting at. Yeah. Is that it seems like a lot of times he who has the customer sets the rates, and that's not the carrier in many instances and i think that's where the carrier but but what the carrier feels and what really is can be two different things listen okay listen because <laughs> we're gonna we're coming full circle and you can look at it and we and <laughs> no, it's fun there's, isn't there's, it there's gonna be end of this right okay and if you want to take that the way the way you you set the example right yeah they the broker or the shipper owns the unit or the the, the pallet that needs to move and you have the carrier that's got the equipment to do it at some point, they just come together, right? And and the broker can be the one that brings them together. It can be a load board. It could be anybody, right? But at some point, the shipper goes, I want to be, I want to pay whatever, X amount of dollars. Like, that's what my threshold for paying is or what I want to pay. And the carrier goes, yes, I need to make X amount of dollars to be able to operate my business and be profitable and pay everyone and live a good life. And that's, at some point, that just, it, everything comes together. It's magical, right? I mean, there is, there is a free market aspect to it. No. And there's weird ebbs and flows to the market, right? I mean, and we're in, uh, we're in one of these. But we were, six weeks ago, we were in the lowest I've ever seen it, right? We were in the worst. And I would tell you, neither is healthy for the industry. People may be happy right now they're getting big rates, but it's not healthy. Being at any extreme is bad. And you really well, somewhere in the middle. I agree, I agree. And it's not gonna, it's not gonna last. I don't know how long it'll last, but you could compare well, it to a reaction, Right, what's gonna happen, right? This happened in freight in 2018 is and it's already happening as you you talk about it here is how many people are like looking at this being like oh my gosh easy money we need to go out i was just gonna say you've got guys at truck stops waving hundred dollar bills right so so you're gonna add all this capacity to the market right you're gonna have a huge amount of flood of capacity just as when the yeah everything starts to level out on the on the actual cars units to move and then you're gonna get this and now your supply side's higher than your demand and so the market's going to start to do this, 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 and then eventually kind of does this and even down the middle. But that's what happens every time. I mean, I've been doing it 15 years. I've seen the cycle <laughs> over and over. Right? It doesn't change. It doesn't change. Like, in 2018, it was well, dead. And then it's you know off. what? That's why it's, it's almost like it's like being a commentator during a football game. I mean, anything can happen at any time. Yeah. So <laughs> it, that's why when I talk speculation live, I'm not as interested in speculating as I am identifying the parts and the verticals that comprise the entire industry. Yeah, well, and, and there's, there's a lot of That's my goal here. Right now that are contributing, right? I mean, you have, you mentioned regulations, right? Insurance prices have gone up for everybody. Yes. The, so you kind of have this thing. Insurance went way up, but what's the price of diesel? You know, you're everyone's real happy about paying $2 at the pump right yeah, now. Yeah, but the cost of the insurance is hardly much- offsets your diesel parachute yeah. but those are the ways you have to look at it. kind of what what how's my operating cost what am i looking at? like is any care our cares for, for when diesel spikes so diesel's not going to be at two dollars a gallon for the next five years right but is everybody ready for when fuel goes up 
I mean, are we prepared for what that looks like? Well, and when fuel like, goes up, we're going to hear the green and zero emissions talk go up again too. What? Of course. And I think yeah. I think electric car hauling trucks are badass. I think that needs to be. Uh, wow, you know that technology. Motors and see did what you we can do with those did models. you see that in industry news that the yeah. from half to full. They could charge it in 30 minutes. That was for the truck. Well, just crazy. That's crazy. That is yeah. crazy. It's just what's the infrastructure for that right now, right? So that that's what's hard. I think... Uh, right. Think we're Where are you going to charge it? Way. Well, we know a place in El Paso. Why not? <laughs> no. <laughs> <that's>... <laughs> The, uh, you know, the, the people people who are kind of mentioned, right, because the, the length of hauls would get you at some point, right? But again, if you have a network that can cross the country, you know, why not? Why not go electric? Well, and I think that's why there has been or has been at points, especially within EVs, and we're talking uh, cars, uh, we've seen over time over the last several years major initiatives to get charging locations in well, various locations and you see them pop not, up they're not universal well that's the thing you know what you're right charging technology types of batteries types of chargers in yeah Europe it is in europe it's standard mandated well, by the government so it's well good. that's where and then don't you love it that we make fun of europeans often enough to where we're not going to learn enough but that's you know that's okay <laughs> Yeah, we have a European office. So, That's uh, why I made the cat lady meme. I have a lot to learn, but only from people like me. <laughs> right? Okay, well done. That's why they say you just played yourself. Yeah. Well, right? You just played yourself. We, hey, we, we didn't we haven't talked a lot about dealerships. Okay. Um I wrote down in my notes, okay, so you know, making deals with dealerships, you know, uh pricing and uh just brokering in general and also like clean home delivery car cleaning cars cleaning trucks covid cleaning customer covid cleaning etc that's the topic <laughs> home delivery <laughs> well yeah so you know home delivery it's interesting i i keep talking about home delivery i know it's not it's not traditional car hauling it's not correct. but it's intersecting with are you a company large enough to where you have a final mile division? Our RPM does do final mile, okay. right? Okay. We've been thinking about it for probably the last year and a half, right? But not a lot. It was it's niche and it was used for very specific reasons and some customers right there trying to offer a certain customer experience, whatever. Well, three months ago, all of a sudden everyone's like, we need to figure this out ASAP, right? I mean, it was all about how do we how do we accommodate home deliveries and contactless delivery. So it really supercharged uh, the need for it. But there's not uh, you know great answers in the industry for it, right? You have you know you have drivers that are used to uh, or carriers that are used to picking up at an auction and delivering to a dealer, or, you know, delivering to an auction or whatever it is, right? And not used to if you're you know, imagine uh, Jay, if you bought a car. From you know, pick your favorite online retailer, uh, whatever. We'll Let's call say it's a local dealer. Let's say no, it's no, a we'll pick a big dog. We'll pick a big dog, right? We'll pick. You buy a car online, like Shift.com. You go on there and you buy a car, right? Okay. Okay. And that car shipped to your house. You've never seen this thing before, but you own it. You own this thing now. You pay it online. You find it. Whatever it is, it shows up. What's the first thing you're going to want to be able to do as that car shows up? You know, you're going to want to actually see the car right i want to look it over i want to get inside i want to be make sure everything's like the way it was represented on christian line how yeah. long does a consumer need to do that 30 minutes 40 minutes i don't know whatever whatever they need a driver is like i get paid by the hour like yo i gotta go like i got cars to pick up i'm hooking and booking let's rock and roll is that driver going to be patient and allow a customer to do their thing, look it over, ask questions? That's maybe? an awesome question. I'm going to ask it. I talk to final mile companies and I'm going to ask that question. Wow. Do you know the answer to that? I mean, I don't know. Well, have you gotten feedback it, on it? People that are doing it right. You have to, you have to set that expectation, you know, and that's how you, that's how you sell the load when you're talking with drivers. Like, hey, this is what's going to happen. It's going to be time. And, and, you know, you, you kind of be upfront with people. Hey, this is a, this is a residential delivery. Like, we need, you know, clean equipment. We need professional drivers. You know, we may request, hey, you know, you need to be able to speak the language of the individual that you're going to deliver to, right? That that may be important um, to, to whoever it is. And, 
you know, we want you to understand you're taking going to into a neighborhood. Can you do you have equipment that can fit in a neighborhood? We don't want to set the expectation that uh, that a driver has to go out and meet you at a Walmart or whatever it is. We want you to be able to fit into a subdivision. So do you have a three car haul or a two car, or whatever it is that can fit inside the neighborhood? When you offload this thing, is it going to be the first car off? Are you going to play shuffle cars? You know, what does that customer delivery experience look like? And then can we white label that experience for a customer? You know, maybe we send we work closely with drivers and we send them. You know, co-branded hats, RPM gear, so they're, they're able to create a, a nice customer experience. So there's all sorts of things to take into consideration with the, the final mile. Um, so how do you make that profitable? Well, isn't that the hard part? Yeah, it's hard. This is <laughs> whole business is hard. None of this is. Easy. <laughs> no, well, that's and that's why that's one of the reasons I love to talk about final mile is it sounds, it sounds hard. This to see a profit on that. And that's why I get, that's why I go even further and talk about customer expectations. Yeah. Because I, I don't know about DoorDash and Uber Eats, but I can't imagine there's a whole lot of, there's not a lot of profit margin in delivering people their food. Yeah, yeah. You know, right? It's just scale, right? You need and, to. And you Amazon, here, Amazon Prime didn't help. Right. Well, that right. that's. And we talk about that, right? And that's kind of cliche is the Amazon Prime effect. But, you know, being able to offer, like we do, right? We, we today have, our, as RPM, we have a, a link that we send to customers. And we're like, hey, you can refresh this thing a million times as much as you want to see where your car's at. Like, we don't we don't need a, someone to make a million phone calls to us. It makes customers feel good. Like, hey, if as long as I can see this thing bumming down the road and it has an ETA Saturday at noon, I feel good. Like, I'm okay. And we've had customers do that where we, we can see the stats on that sort of thing. So we had one time a customer had clicked the link 380 times, and it was like a two-day route. <laughs> and, and just, you know, See like, that? Wow. I believe. I can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> Where's my car? Where's my car? Where's my car? Yeah, Honey, are, watch. Yeah, but are you offering that experience to the customer, right? And in this case, the customer is an actual like, customer. It's not B2B. It's B2C. So are you able to create that experience for them You know, in, in a meaningful way? Because we have our customer, and then it's our customer's customer. And you have to, you have to please both of them. You know, That's where it gets challenging. And some of the guys that do Relo here yeah. probably understand that. Right? Relo is a very similar type of business where you're you're trying to please everybody. And there's nothing, you know, you upset anyone and you've done a terrible job. So, yeah, amen. Wow. Um, I like that. See, that was a good topic. Thank you, man. I, and that's thing too. You know what? I want to take this moment. I really, Jake. I we're gonna keep going for a little bit, but Jake, I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you were you were in the live chat on Dispatching Live. On Thursday, yeah, yeah, you were in the yeah. dis- You were in the live chat. I think Friday. And cars. Were you in cars in the move? Uh, were you there? Maybe not. Was, Maybe I'm no, thinking of last no. Tuesday night with Motherload. No. So, um, uh, Jay asked, "How is RPM going to make profit?" Wall <laughs> doesn't like us. Wall well, that's Wall, don't pay shit. But well, I, that, I, I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I think I think we pay out pretty good yeah, right now. I, and Wally, I didn't. I I didn't ask how RPM is going to be profitable. I was talking about home delivery, which, and, and that's the and that's why I made that 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 uh, that image earlier. Uh, dealers don't want to do this or whatever that flatbed delivery. I've sat in. I sit. I mean, I, I I am crazy. I will go to any automotive webinar I can get a link to. I sit through them all. I've got one at one, I've got one tomorrow morning at eight thirty. Automotive Logistics, they go live every Wednesday. Well, are they? Or are they on hiatus? Anyways, then there's another one at like one or two o'clock. I, I'm doing like two a day right now. That's you're, you're a braver man than me. Right, I'm crazy. Got nothing. Jay has nothing to do. So uh, uh, today I had heard a dealer, a, a large dealer, say that. Basically, his controller said, we cannot be doing, we cannot, we can't do home delivery. We're not making any money at it. Yeah. It's taking up everyone's time. We're yeah. not making money. We got to get, we got to get out of home delivery. We have to, we have to offer it, but we can't do it. And it reminded me of just like OEMs. Why don't OEMs have their own car haulers? Because they don't want to do it. Some do. Right. And I'm <laughs> sure there's been iterations and there will always be... But not. Uh, but what you know is not all OEMs deliver their own cars. In fact, it's not even half. No, I mean the, the amount that FCA does with their private fleet is nominal, and, and that that's a, that's quite telling, isn't it? 
well, of course, do you want to be a trucking company or do you want to be an OEM? Who the hell wants to run a trucking company? Anyway? Well, okay, and I think that's exactly, you know? that's it, Wally. Who wants to do this? Like, who wants, who to, be wants to do who this? Wants to be a trucking, like, asset, non-asset, I don't care. This, this business is rough, right? It is hard. And that's another reason why when I talk about, oh, great, Michael and the Europeans. See, we're not gonna, so we're not gonna learn from the Europeans. Dang it! No, listen, we got guys in, uh, and you gotta be careful. Our guys are, are in Amsterdam, right? So they're Dutch. The Dutch are like all six eight. I mean, they're all ripped and gorgeous. You gotta be careful. Awesome. <laughs> they, they will beat you up. They're not sissies. They're tough. <laughs> well, I, I just saw a, uh, I just saw a German electric. It's an electric vehicle. Yeah. School ger- de bussy, e bussy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. E bussy, and it's like. This line of cars and they're all compartmentalized. It's so German. It's awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The European are doing different things. They're like, it's it's a, a different world over there, right? But they're trying to get more cars off the road, right? I mean, the you know exactly. the, the buying like a GT Mustang in the Netherlands is like a hundred grand because of tax, like uh, pollution laws, right? Not not due to anything else other than just you pay to play if you want something that doesn't get good gas mileage. So that's why they uh, they live they live that way, you know. I was just looking at my notes. You know, I'm reminded of. Uh, let's talk about that LinkedIn post. Okay. <laughs> Remember how well, that was kind of what got us to start talking. You messaged me. I got a few messages. Yeah. <laughs> so in a nutshell, what, what was the original, again, we're not going to name names or that. I don't even remember who it was, but what was the, what was the gist of the post? Uh, the gist of the post was, Hey, I'm a large retailer dealer group. Uh, I need help getting raw units into, into my dealership. So I, I'm having a hard time getting inventory. I'm not looking for any kind of relationship. I just, I'm working with the best in the business. I just need someone to help me bridge the gap for the short term pain. Um, who can help me out? If anyone knows anyone, send them my way. That was the gist of the post. Yeah. That's what I read. And what was your reply? Uh, what was my reply? <laughs> <laughs> well, so I, I'll, I'll try to nutshell your reply. Yeah. And I listen, I'm a, I'm a fair guy. You, you know me. I'm not here to bash you. I liked it. And that's yeah. why I contacted you. Well, I put it out there for having to leave. Well, so, and, and yeah. that, that's what I, that's another thing that I liked. Jake, one of the things we need is we know there's a lot of feelings and, and we see it in Facebook groups, but it's still, uh, I don't know if I don't know if an, there's enough like academia on the topic to help elevate the industry. Cuz gossip doesn't work. Let's have a discussion, sure. right? And so your reply was more like, "Well, we could talk and I work at such a company, but why would you set a boundary that we can't have a relationship after I help you?" <laughs> You're making because, this sound nicer than it was. So I. <laughs> well, that's my job. That's who I am. I'm, I'm always more fair than I need to be. I was like, hey, listen. Yes, I can help you. Yes, like I, we can reach out and we can talk. But you said in here you're not looking for a relationship. You're not looking for a partnership. And if you're not, I'm not interested in helping you. Why should I put you in my in my capacity, in my network? Right? Why should I add you in and allow you to have access to all the capacity that I offer my customers if you're just looking for one, two, three, four weeks of reprieve, and then you're never going to speak to me again, why would I give you access, right? There's no value in it for me. There's definitely a short-term value in it for you, but it's not fair to anyone else I work with to even allow you to move units with. And what was cool about it is you you put on the carpet kind of the, the, the you reduced it to, listen, you just, you just kind of tainted the, the basics of what a relationship and what help is you know like you know hey buddy can you spare a dime but (laughs) i I I don't know if that's the right analogy but i liked it and i think actually it was indicative of the way dealers and carriers or brokers i'm gonna i'm gonna leave out brokers dealers and carriers already have this giant chasm of communication gap and there, I thought it represented that. There's this whole, and this industry is filled with it. And I, I, I see some guys in here when they talk about like, hey, you'll, you'll beat me up on it right now because I'm going to beat you up later, right? This industry is filled with what have you done for me lately types. Um, and not a lot of like, hey, this is a long-term relationship. You know, if I can, if I can help a small carrier become a big carrier, 
that's my goal, right? If I can give you fair rates, like if the market's down and I pay you the same and the market's up and you're doing it for the same, that's a relationship. Uh, and we're keeping you loaded, we're helping you grow and you're helping us, you know, achieve our customer goals and, and we're helping you achieve your, your fleet goals or finding back goals or whatever value it is that, that we're providing for you or any program, this could be anybody. But you need to find where there's value. Just chasing dollars is not good business for anybody. Right. You know, find value in your broker partners, find value with the, the carriers you work with, find value in the shippers you're working with. If you're not adding to the industry and you're just chasing bucks, uh, it's, you know, it's tiresome. You know, you feel like you're just beating your head against the wall every day. And, and that's not always a lot of fun, um, you know, but you want people there for you. you want you want people to grow with you. You know, our preamps growing very fast. We're, we're you know, a hyper growth company and we've, we've taken a lot of carriers on that journey and a lot of customers put their trust in us early on that, that helped us achieve our goals and allowed us to go out and get in front of other customers and, and be able to leverage everything we had built and, and, and continue with that. So on and so forth, right? To have more loads off our carriers, be able to close more loops and, and be able to fill more gaps and fill more backhauls where there's, you know, a lot of companies we work with, they were, well, five, 10 truck operations. Now they're 30, 40. And a lot of this just with the partnership and, and keeping them loaded with, with our units and, you know, whatever we can do to help them grow. That's what we want to do. You know, so there's got, there's got to be value and there's definitely a partnership and a, and a give, give, um, you know, and sometimes people want to be transactional and that happens too. Right. I mean, that's part of the business and it is what it is. But I, what I hate saying is, well, you know, if I run a report and I can see every carrier I've used in the last six months, just one time. And if that tail is, you know, Hundreds long, as disappointing. It means it means we failed when that's happened. You know, before we move on, I want to point out, um, and I don't know if. Oh yeah, okay, you can still hear me. Nick uh, contributed fifty dollars in the in the super chat, and I just I always want to mention the super chats. Um, it really helps the channel, and it means a lot. I, I hope it's an indication that I'm headed in the right right direction. So Nick, thank you so much, Nick. Let. Uh, Please let me and Ty know if there's something we can do for you. Um, I know that uh, I mentioned the Cars on the Move monthly roundtable earlier, but um, please do let me know what Auto Transport Intel and CTS can do for you. I put my email address in there, and that applies to everybody. Listen to me. Anyone's welcome to email me at any time. And, um, you know, if you, gotta, if you want to share an article, share a, a post of a rate that you can't believe or you know whatever it is i love to see that stuff and i i like i there's a lot of good here there's a lot of good um been a lot of good live chat interaction i also think this one from solomon is is interesting i mean you guys must be happy because after covid can't pandemic a lot of truckers let me go up here a lot of truckers left the business entire california is going crazy here ever seen a sedan post for 1500 come on dude now it's interesting, Solomon. It, it, that what I what I think I would say is, well, I don't think anybody's happy that uh, this is happening. Now, seeing the market swing in the direction of carriers getting paid better than average, I think I think is is good as opposed to I agree with you. Wild swings not good, but sometimes when the pendulum swings. And we could think of this in other social aspects and whatnot. We can really get philosophical with this. But sometimes the swing of a pendulum reminds us of how much we took something for granted. And also, uh, you know, helps us recognize other parts of an ecosystem that we just didn't pay as much attention to before. Yeah. You know, Jay, the part of it is this, yeah. this market hides the the some of the the folks that maybe just shouldn't be in the business right it allows people to enter and do a bad job or have a poorly run company and through sheer force of will and brute force they're able to pick off you know the, these loads that, that pay big money and, and unfortunately a lot of those you know individuals they're the ones that give the bad name right like hey this driver was a jerk you just read a review on uh, on your show there with uh, your favorite broker listed right that wasn't necessarily the broker's fault right they had hired a carrier that probably was doing it for cheap or the cheapest guy that, that was out there whatever whoever accepted it and it was a terrible customer experience right but those those types of drivers that, that get in and jump in they're able to do that right now because they don't have to be a very good company to be successful right so you as soon as the market shakes a little bit 
those folks are out, right? They're 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 done. They're out of this business. They're moving on. Um, you know, when you have a nice stable market, it means you have good, well-run companies, professional drivers, people are doing a good job, good brokers, good everybody, right? And that's that's the the spot you want to be in. In the depressed market, everyone's going under. I mean, it's not good for anybody, right? It's quite no. strong to survive. But up here, you allow awful to thrive too. So you really want to be in the middle. I mean, that that's the best the best for everyone. That's why I say when I say the market being high is not healthy. This is not. It, it, it breeds a lot of bad habits and bad behaviors. Makes people do dumb things and, and get desperate and make bad decisions. And that's bad because it that price eventually is going to get passed on. You know, if, if the the used car market, everyone's paying. Like you mentioned it, someone talking about how expensive it is for the dealer to do business. They're paying. 50, 60, 80, 100 percent premiums move freight. You know, that money's just going to get tossed into the price of used vehicles. Look at used car sales and see how much stuff's going for you. You're seeing the prices go up. That's not just because of a lack of inventory. That's because transportation costs are so high, and you're going to continue to see that. Well, it's, it's, it appears because I try to follow this. Uh, it appears there's a lot of factors when it comes to what's happening with the used car market right now. Um, I do want to say this is that it's interesting too, and as the as the pendulum swings, uh, whether it's the carrier that didn't have a, a solid business model or a broker that didn't have a solid business model, right? If you're, if you're living off the same leads everybody else is, if you if I talk about dicey, I talk about barrier to entry for carriers being low. <laughs> The barrier to entry for a broker is is the sludge. I mean, I mean, there's no barrier. To entry. Oh man, it's nothing, right? I mean, well, can- and I I've had carriers. That's the problem. I've seen carriers say that on Facebook, like yeah, there's so many of them. They're like, where did a where did you? I think someone just said, where did you get the idea to be a broker? I think it's how they start. Yeah, right. Like, and, and but the same thing with uh, same exact way. Why did you go out and get a hot shot or in a, in a wedge and start doing? It? Because somebody said, "Oh, look how much money you can make. Look how easy this is. You just you just make some phone calls and money rings from the ceilings." You know, they sell this dream. And I, I went to a hotel food. seminar and, and had a yeah, Philly you know, cheesesteak. Who was it? You <laughs> or somebody? I, forget, I don't know if it was in your chat or someone said like something about like is being a licensed broker worth or like getting a license to be a broker. I'm like, what the hell's a broker like? There's no such thing. Like, the fact that someone's out there selling to be a licensed broker is well, not it, that's interesting you say that because I tell you what, you know what gets really gnarly is when you look into uh, groups that are talking about brokering laws and dispatching laws and like you know grabbing the policeman and blowing the whistle and hey he's bad and he's not bad i mean it gets really weird yeah i mean i, I don't i i don't even look <laughs> so i don't i don't I play the law enforcement some game because i just some think folks that is groups, but i don't know you know we, we're who we are right you know our rpm fortunately for us i would never be well, part of the organization I'm, standing so I mean, hey i'm glad you said that because i saw a question earlier i wrote it down i wanted to ask it at the right time does RPM have a load board? Let's talk about technology for a minute. <laughs> so we don't have what you'd consider a traditional load board. Okay. Um, we do have carriers that are basically on uh, you know, our email list. Uh, so we'll present loads out through email blasts um, or through just your relationships or whatever. We, you know, that, that's kind of how we operate today. I think there's uh, – We've discussed kind of how to do that, right? It's like, do you want to publish all your available loads? Do you not? Does that, you know, you mentioned earlier about people wanting to be really tight with their data. Um, well, there's they, always going to be people um, that'll scrape your data. Yeah, right. And I'm I mean, not, not the ultimate decision maker, you know what I mean? So uh, it's not up to me. But uh, but I, I think we want ways, you know, and we're approaching ways. How do we put, instead of using a load board, how do I put loads in front of carriers that they care about and want to see? I think that's the future we're heading in. Um, so if you, if we know you, we have information on you or you've run those for us, let's say you run the Detroit Nashville corridor or whatever. I only want to put loads in front of you that are within those areas that you're going to care about and more likely to accept. Um, instead of having you lot, you know, kind of wade through all this different trash or do your own searches. Like why, again, frictionless, frictionless, frictionless. Why make drivers do this work? Why make carriers do this work? If I can present to you loads you'll want to take from me with like a buy it now, that's going to be, uh, you know, kind of the future that we have. Um, so on that note, if you want to be a carrier in the RPM network, what do you do? So you can go to rpmcarriers.com and that's kind of our vetting 
So if you that there'll be like a little gating page there that uh, you type your MC number in and see if you get in. But uh, okay, you know, I, would, I would definitely. I mean that that gets you through the setup process. Um, I just posted in the live chat. So when I went to rpmcarriers.com, it yeah it pops up kind of a long link. Thanks yeah, for your well, interest. So RMIS is uh, uh, is this the essentially third party system we use registry monitoring. So that's the oh system. okay yeah I've, yeah. Things for us, monitors your authority, your cool. safety scores, everything there is just kept track of um, to make sure you're you know still a good upstanding carrier. And if you die, like if something happens, your insurance gets deactivated, you lose your authority, whatever it is, your safety scores go wacky, you go to conditional or whatever, uh, it'll turn you off on our system. So it's just a good way, a nice safety blanket for, for our customers. And I don't have 500 carrier compliance employees, right? <laughs> you know, so I don't yeah. need to have a whole floor of people, you know, no, managing that's... paperwork and all this other garbage. So. And so I just want to help RMIS is what Jake was just talking about it registry monitoring insurance services and they're yeah. a third party that helps monitor whether a carrier is in good standing yeah. to yeah. the specifications i think that you need and yeah. right if, if they work with for, for yeah. the carrier really that's invisible to them that's just the service that we we pay for um to make sure everything's being monitored that's cool that's cool all right so that's what you do so if you want to work with rpm is there more ways to contact you or is that pretty much it no, so that would be the setup process, which, you know, is usually like that's the hurdle. Hey, make sure that you get stuff and everything like that. But no, we want uh, we want carriers to contact, um, you know, the individual reps at, at RPM. You know, if there's people tuning in here. You can always reach out to me. Um, we break it out regionally. So we have regional uh, managers, you know, Kevin Williams, Mark Weiss. Cameron. Is there a main phone number that I can post? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can put our main phone number in there. It's probably on our website. Um, I didn't, let's see here, RPM, let's go to, is your main site RPM dot, no, it's RPM carriers, RPM carrier dot com? RPM carriers dot com is, uh, is like the RMS site, but if you go to RPM moves dot com. There we go, that's what I was looking for, RPM moves dot com, that's mm -hmm. the main site. Yeah, but and, I'll, I'll send you like our office number. Up yeah, top. perfect. Okay, yeah, rpmmoves.com is the main site. Yep. And then, yeah, I'm ready when you are. Uh, I'll just send it to you here. Okay, the, cool. The so chat. then I'll post the phone number as well. And those are, these are just main numbers. Well, this um, is Kevin. I just sent you Kevin's number, Kevin. <laughs> so that's you okay. Can, but yeah, I use can Kevin. Can I post it? Yeah, fuck yeah, whatever. <laughs> well, I mean, I just unless there's an 800 number that you'd rather I post. I want you, I want everyone that wants to get through to somebody to talk to somebody immediately without going through menus. Right? I guess that's my point, right? Yeah, cool. I can send you through the the phone tree and you kind of get someone. But I'll tell Kevin, hey, I was on the show. We talked. Cool. Uh, Jay published this. There's probably gonna be carriers reaching out who are interested in working with cool. us. And Kevin, uh, he's a pretty uh, stand up dude for the, for the folks on here know him. So that's all, well, and and I mean I. One of the one of the parts of this entire exercise, uh, I mean, because this is I, I consider this to be the type of show that I plan on continuing to do upper level business conversation. Uh, I mean, we can get into types of flippers and we can do that, um, but actually, I that's not I don't think that's the the right thing to do to help you grow your business. And uh, I highly encourage, if, if you know somebody that wants to have this level of conversation about auto transport, please email me, autotransportintel at gmail.com. There is not enough of this happening in auto transport. And I've seen, I've seen some interviews in auto transport, and they're, they're just they're lacking in, man, there's a lack of, of, actual knowledge about this industry and we need we need to help get it out of the crazy wild west yes i agree <laughs> lack of substance is uh lack is, of substance thank and, you and i think you touched on it a few times in some of the shows you talked about but a lot of content gets published for the sake of being published and it's uh, to help with SEO. <laughs> so people publish stuff that, you know, is just kind of, you know, I, like just I, to get your car ready for shipping. Here's the five most important steps, you know, make sure your oh car my, is clean. 
this was ready to it's in it's, your driveway. You know, it just stops sense, you know. It's so funny. Okay, so uh, <laughs> so like, listen, we blogs are are just written words that you're gonna read, and they're on websites. So it doesn't make it doesn't mean that blogs are bad. But I am now seeing over and over these blog posts that literally the whole point of the post was near the bottom. There's a link to the lead generator and they're just getting link juice. That was the whole point. And I mean, it happens almost daily. There, It's not that there's nothing in the blog, but there's not much. No, I mean, it's there for a purpose. It, you know, that's driving. It's just and a link to the lead generator. And we put out content to customers, but it's usually useful, right? If it's a white paper or something, I, and I'm, I have all published with my name on that. You guys can probably search my name and find stuff, right? That's it's out there. And, um, it's it's somewhat meaningful, you know what I mean, or somehow related to what's going on. But uh, you know, we put we say even when we do like email blasts, like marketing type blasts, like at least there's something useful. They're like, hey, uh, you know, inventory is tight right now, like the dealerships, right? Hey, inventory sucks. Do you need help getting things moved? You know, do you have the right partners in place? Like, here's how you would do that. Or we may talk about how do you make your website um, able to sell, have, have visibility to transportation, right? A lot of dealerships that are even, you know, somewhat large regional dealerships don't have a way to surface their inventory to buyers. You know, if I'm a buyer in Detroit and they have a location in Indianapolis and in Detroit, they're only going to show me the Detroit location inventory, not the Indianapolis inventory when... I mean, shit, it's like, you know, a few hundred bucks just to ship that up and you're missing out on sales, right? So, you know, how do you, you know, so do, hey, we have this technology, helps you do this, you know, why not want to work with us? So, at least you're offering something, then building them value, and that's that's the type of stuff that, that we put out there instead of kind of that generic, you know, just five five reasons to, to ship your car instead yes. of drive, you know, like, you know, the, right. <laughs> the five techniques. It's like a Cosmopolitan, art, you know, uh, article where it's like nonsense, you know, it's like, the 12th place, it'll drive a man right. crazy. And you're like, it's that it's some lorp, some whatever they call that Roman gobbledygook. Yeah. Um, um, let's talk about a car shipping button for a second. I'm going to let you go real soon. But I, I, uh, I'm I, glad we're actually in this territory of what is and what isn't. Because I don't know how a few companies have, like, taken the market share on the idea that they're the ones with a car shipping button. And you, I think I was mentioning this too, and you are like, what's a car shipping button? Yeah, well, so... Uh, that is, that, well, that's actually it. What is a car shipping button? You're talking about, like, when you Google and your top 10 results are all ad-based, and it's world's, well, fast shipping, world's cheapest shipping, ship your car for free. You know, there, <laughs> well, it's, yeah, it's actually an overlap of what I'm talking about. It, what, there's... And I like Michael Culler. Michael Culler, we're getting into dangerous territory now, which is why I'm going to be careful. But, but uh, Michael Culler said it. Yeah, uh, he likes the Wild West, and and I and I know what you mean because the Wild West, when everything's totally nailed down, right, then it's it, it gets a little like we we get nostalgic for the good old days. But we're in such a crazy Wild West. I think we need a little less you can get shot walking out of the saloon. Right? I think we don't want, none of us want to feel like a commodity. Okay. You know, right. the, the commoditization of transportation, it just is what it is. Just accept that that's the way that we're viewed by the, the greater shipping world. Right. <laughs> and generally in a negative way in that they don't want to deal with it. It's mostly a pain in the ass for most of our customers they are like, we just want, it to be easy and get out. Like our job is as a consigner, and I, I'm the doing, car shipping button. Right, I'm I'm a uh, I'm doing valuations or trying to buy cars or whatever. Like shipping is just this awful thing I have to do, and I want it to be really really easy. So, and, and that goes for uh, you know businesses as well as customers, right? And just just POV type stuff, right? They just want it to be really simple. It's kind of a headache. So yeah, I mean those that have, have created and if you're your car shipping button you're talking about is like when you're on eBay. And you go, hey, like you can ship your car with these guys for whatever, like vote with them or your lease swap or any of these websites that people buy on. You're talking about, hey, I can ship your car, go type. Is that what we're talking about? Well, we're yeah, no, I, I, and I'm and I'm, I'm leaving it unspecific at the moment because I'm just enjoying the guessing. But part of what I'm getting at is that the I feel like the here's part of the Wild West that I think would be good to clean up is that 
you've got people Googling cheap car shipping and yeah. they literally don't see a problem with that or know what else they would do. And I think that's because there's a lack of visibility and information in car shipping. Who's Googling that, though? Are you talking about consumers or businesses? POV. I mean, all right. So POV people are... But if but you why go should, to... Why should, uh, why should you or I, as uh, the layperson, be educated in car shipping? <laughs> you know, truthfully. Uh, you know? That, well, there is a time and a place. But the moment you feel like you need car shipping is not the moment you should be Googling cheap car shipping. What, what it shouldn't Google be a spam-filled blog that then serves as your professor. Yeah, for sure. And right. I, I, think that's, I think that's because POVs have become low-hanging fruit in the industry. Um, and it's basically who has the best mousetrap to capture the most POV moves. Well, you talk to a repo lot, though, they know about as much about car shipping as the guy that Googled cheap car shipping. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Right? right, they're probably just faking it. I'm just no, kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> any, any professional service you buy, unless you're like a weirdo like me, you probably don't do all that much research on it. Like, if you want to move houses when you're doing a relocation, like, what do you what do you Google when you want to move furniture? You know, furniture haulers. You know, or cheap furniture. Go. Nick points out something great. The newer generation's better at checking reviews. Right there, we go. Now we're headed in the right direction. But now those fake reviews. Well, exactly. Reviews that, that's exactly right. Fake. Those reviews could be bought and sold. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but that people want to see that. So everyone plays the game, right? I mean, you know, it just has to do with the amount of brokers that are, that are in the space and the fact that it's, it's considered low hanging fruit, right? It's just easy to do a credit card transaction. You don't get float a lot of money, right? Doing what we do, like, requires a lot of capital, right? Because you're floating. I'm paying the carriers way sooner than I get paid. And there's a big float and yada, yada, yada. But POV, like, I'm charging a customer immediately. Hey, I get my thousand dollars up front. Well, I pay the carrier nine hundred. I'm already up. Hell, hallelujah, you know. And that, well, there's part of it too. Uh, POV customers don't know: should I pay a deposit? Should I not pay a deposit? They don't know. The average POV customer still has no idea who to trust to get the right information. The best reviews. So who's the, who's the top list? I mean, listen, this is how people buy things in America, right? Probably across the world, they Google it. There's the top couple of results. They look at the reviews, click, buy, go. Move on with their life. Done. All right. That's a good so idea. But who has the best mousetrap? Yeah. It's, just, it, it's basically who's going to create the best mousetrap out there. Um, I'm going to go with top lead generator for 200. <laughs> the guy that made all those blogs and just all he wanted was the link. All right. The best mousetrap for sure, right? <laughs> you know, whoever. They create a good mousetrap. Um. I think we covered everything. Uh, regulations is boring, and there's not much to say. That's why I don't really talk about regulations much. I did a compliance show, and I'll touch on it every so often. But overall, um, I don't know. You can't make a whole lot of sense of it. And I mean, they're going to do whatever they want. Whatever, what, exactly. Whatever it is, I'm going to follow. I'm never going to ask a driver to do anything outside of what's legal and ethical and moral. Um, and I have to follow the rules. And I'll tell you this, the more regulation that is added on, the more the prices go up. So, you know, and that's, that's just. Right. And then you try to tell the customer that. I'm like, what are you talking about? Well, trust me, they get a hard slap in the face. The ELDs in 2018 was a nice sharp stick to the eye to most, uh, most shippers that the world has changed. Which brings me back to my argument when you're talking, when you're educating a shipper, right? That's not a simple process. And that's actually, this would be a good way to end the whole conversation about why the industry needs brokers. Somebody's got to make the sale and then educate, etc. I mean... Do yeah. You, I mean, do you have a way of describing all the things a broker does? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you know that that's just it. What what's the value add that you're doing that that you know going direct? Like let's take like a like even on the freight world, right? You know, anyone can go to whatever. You see all these carriers bumming down the road. You you as Jay see the the carriage. So you in your head already know. Here's five carriers I can use, and that's that's it, right? And whatever they tell you the rate is, is that must be the rate. And if they have capacity, they have capacity. And if I ship with them, I ship with them. It's great. Right? Is there a lot of value of, uh, for me to bring that to you? No. But as a broker, I know the 10,000 carriers that have, you know, whatever, 50 trucks that you'll never know, you'll never have to discover to, that have lower operating costs, that can do it for a better deal, probably better service because you're, you know, I have leverage in terms of my spend, right? My overall spend in the transportation industry 
is 200 million versus even if you're a big shipper, 8 million, right? So I have, I have scale there. I have, I have ways to, to use my, I have a bigger stick to be able to beat rates down and, and you know, put together a better plan. Um, you're not relying on one person. So if a carrier falls off your load, what are you going to do? Here's like, I can't pick that up today. And like, what's well, got to go today? They're like, ah, I don't have a truck. So what does Jay do? Well, Jay doesn't have that many contacts in the industry, right? So he may call some people and it's late in the day and he has no option. Whereas, you know, the broker is going to be like, well, shit, I need to get this moved. My customer's going to fire me or I'm beholden to them. Like I have to service this account. I have to make a business decision to move this thing at all costs. I'll take losses. I'll do, do whatever I need to do to make sure I uh, service the account. So there's that type of, of aspect to it. Um, there is just what we've talked about, right? Like is, our care is offering technology to their customers. Are they giving them visibility? Are they giving them an app? Are they, you know, giving them peace of mind? Are they, you know, how are you interfacing? So some customers, when you talk about OEMs, they require, I mean, to set up with an OEM is a five figure investment, right? Technology alone is prohibited, right? You're going to have to spend a lot of money to be able to even interface with their technology. It's required to even invoice them to receive units to do anything. How are you going to do that as a, as a, you know, small carrier, right? You're not, it just doesn't make any sense. Uh, whereas small carrier comes to me, now I can load you with OEM units. No problem because I've, I've already done all the integration the technology piece and I'm adding value to the big OEMs because they want to use more, they want more capacity. Trust me, OEMs want more capacity, right? So if I can bring it to them and bridge that gap, say, hey, small carrier, hey, monster shipper, I can be that gap. I can bring it together and act as that marketplace too, right? Just all I want to do is find the right shipper for the right carrier. I feel like I add value to both sides. I've always tried to look at it that way. Um, not just, hey, I just need to find the cheapest truck to, to move this load and make the most profit. Um, that, that's never how I've, I've ever looked at it. And I've been, uh, like I said, freight. I started out as a soup to nuts broker, meaning I was my own desk. I did the carrier side and the customer side. And it was just me. And that's that, that was it. So you just build really good partnerships, relationships. I don't want headaches, right? No one wants a headache. So you want to find a good carrier, pay them a fair rate to make sure they do a good job and, uh, you know, give you a good customer experience on the other end. You don't want to call 2 a.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> that and actually, that the the more I talk to brokers, the more I I feel like I get to be part of painting the picture that there are a lot of good brokers that perform a good service, and it's part of the ecosystem. Um, <laughs> the good news is it doesn't matter either way. Maybe maybe all carriers are perfect and all brokers are trash. So be it. <laughs> but I'm finding that that's not the case. No, listen, there's good and bad in all industries. And I've never looked at it. As, I mean, I know a lot of people like to view this us versus them type thing. I've never, ever once looked at it. Well, and I'll tell you what. It's yeah, that that's what happened as a dispatcher. That's what I ran into. And I'm like, but this can't know, be right. You know what's interesting? It, it, it's funny. So, you know, in, in, our, world, in, in the, our our model is the buy-sell model, right? So we have customer sales that go out and, you know, have these discussions with customers, try and get the freight on the board. We have carrier sales, and they build relationships with the carriers, and get capacity in the system to cover loads, right? That's so within the four walls, we create that same microcosm of customer side versus carrier side. So yeah, it always exists. The, the well, carriers. This uh, is why this why exists internally as well. So that should make everyone feel good that you have advocates within the broker. Trust me. Well, that's why I say essentially what a broker does is sales. Yeah. Because as the carrier, as the driver you may not be available or up for that sales function. And then beyond that, it gets, I mean, into logistics and craziness. And again, if you're, as, as uh, uh, you know, if you're one, if one truck owner operator and you yeah. do start building clients, you're going to have to broker some of those well, loads. If, if you, if you really wanted the full pitch, you know, one day you let me know and then I can tell you all the value that, that uh, a good broker brings, you know, in, in the Great. Of RPM, but no I one smell another it. show. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants it. <laughs> well, that is the problem, isn't it? Exactly. We'd have, we'd be as popular as a as a webinar given corporate slogans. That'd be what it'd be a thirty minute commercial, and uh, and I, I wouldn't want to do that anybody. But there's tons of value that, that comes from it, right? And and large asset based guys do it too, right? They, you know, if they can support the the business and they're sophisticated and have technology and everything. Trust me, uh, there's plenty of asset guys I used to have, plenty of their own customers, all the same. And, and the value I provide to some of those large carriers or medium-sized carriers is just to close loops. I'm, and, and I like doing that. I want to reduce deadhead miles. 
you know, that's, uh, you know, that's one of the, the things we're talking about is, hey, we're actually, a, uh, we're a green company. Um, the less empty miles I, you have on a truck, the, the better you are for the environment, the world we live in, the better it is for your pocketbook. And if I can fill those miles with, with my units, all the better. Well, I'll tell you what, Jake, this has been awesome. It's 1040. I kept you almost two hours. It's 1140. I, I stayed up till midnight. It's 1140, dude. <laughs> dude, Eastern time. Yeah, so I want to thank you so much. I mean, this has been a great show. I knew this was going to be great, and it, and it was great. This was awesome. Well, yeah, no, I had a, had a good time. I hope uh, I hope your audience uh, had a good time and uh, got I've some been, value. <laughs> yeah, well, we've been we 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 both been checking out the live chat here and there, and um, you can't please all the people all the time, but I I'm pretty sure we pleased most of the people. We're gonna go with the eighty <laughs> twenty rule, which is it counts as success. I'll 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 leave feeling that somebody has some kind of takeaway, no matter what it is. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. yeah. No, really, and thank you, Ron. And, you know, listen, Jake, we really appreciate you being here. Thanks for taking the time. And do me a favor. Tell Anthony that I want to see the new mobile app, and okay. we need to make a deal. We need to get him on the show and make a deal. Coach would love to show you the new mobile app. I promise you. All right, but what do you love to make a deal? <laughs> Let me know. know. <laughs> but, you know, he's well, a... <laughs> Well, I put it past him. So. We'll, 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 t we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out. But I'm glad that we can help, uh, you know, people get to understand more about the industry. And I am going to bid you good night. So thanks so much, Jake. Cool. Good night. Appreciate it. All right. Peace out. Take care. I will end this meeting now. Bing. Okay, cool. I let him go. That was awesome. Jake was fantastic. Really. I mean, that was that was fantastic. You guys know that. And then I end the show. All right. I got the thanks for watching ATI screen. So we must be serious. The show is ending soon. I want to say this. Uh, I just saw the comment in the live chat. Do you know what he's talking about? Do you know what what is going on? What is he talking about? And I'll tell you what. That's awesome. That is so awesome. Because if we knew everything he was talking about, all the time if you knew what i was talking about he was talking about everybody knows what we're talking about then we're not really learning much are we but when we're when we're tested we all remember there was that class whatever it was a seminar whatever it was and we're sitting there we're like yeah what are they talking about and if we could it, it, hopefully if they were a good educator there's moments where we do know what they're talking about and then there's moments where we don't and we're learning right and we're pushing the boundaries of understanding of this industry that's the whole point that is what Auto Transport Intel is for. So, uh, just like with Fight Club, you're supposed to go out and find somebody to bring back into the club. Do that. Tell somebody that is not watching this. Clearly, not everybody's here, which I think is so crazy. Tell somebody. Oh my God! Listen, you gotta watch Auto Transport Intel. This is where. They actually talk about the industry as a whole, not just the, you know, the new type of flipper or, you know, that brokers suck or whatever, you know, that, uh, what that one trick pony. No auto transport Intel, not a one trick pony. You got to go there. You got to check it out. In fact, I'll do you a solid. Here's the link to episode 149 where Jay and Jake talk for two hours about the industry and it never really got boring because they talked about pretty much everything oems auctions dealers services equipment loads regulations carriers brokers shippers etc it's a huge industry and there's a lot of money to be made and what what concerns me is when when people get so focused on the competition Instead of learning and growing, yeah, that's a problem. And and, and and if that's your focus, you gotta get out of that. Right? You gotta get out of that, learn something new, recognize, you know, we're in COVID. Everybody knows we're in COVID. We're no longer this is no longer pre COVID and it certainly ain't post COVID. We are in COVID and this is the right time to learn, pivot, and grow. So go to autotransportintel.com. Become an ATI Insider. 
join the Cars on the Move roundtable. Send me an email, autotransportintel at gmail.com. Call Ty. Ty. Hey, guys, Ty, CTS. Whoa. <laughs> See, I hit a button. And there was Ty. And in fact, you know what's really funny about that? I hit the Ty button, and he popped up on the screen. I was just going to type his phone number. He starts talking. 417-483-2764. Thanks, and have a great day. Listen, call Ty. Send me an email. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Here comes the car hauler. Guys, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for being a part of the experience. There's something new happening. I'm so proud to be near the tip of the spear. You're there too. Thanks for watching Auto Transport Intel, and I'll see you soon. Hey guys, Ty, CTS Business Coaching. I connect dealers, auctions, and carriers. If you're a dealer and you're not getting your inventory on the lot in five days ready to sell, you've got a problem. It's called interest. Like I'm telling you something you don't know. Give me a call. I can connect you with an auction and a carrier, and you can get your cars on the lot in five days or less. 417-483-2764. Thanks, and have a great day.